what's up youtube welcome to a brand new show this is around the seven kingdoms brought to you by sunday slaughter my name is stefan stovetop uh better known as stovetop on the discords uh this is kind of a newer show that we're kind of messing around with uh i have a co-host with me that will be my critical thinking co-host since i'm more of a color commentator <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have Kurt Belisaris uh, in Discord, uh, noted Baratheon player. Uh, what else do you play? Lannisters? I started out as Lannisters, yeah. I started out as Lannisters and Baratheon mostly. Um, so this is a new show. Uh, we, we just kind of, we've been toying around with it for a couple months and with the new patch. Uh, we decided what better time than now to kind of launch the new show, uh, talk about uh, the new patch, uh, talk about what we plan to do with the show. Uh, bring Hopefully it's not just me and Kurt uh, talking to you. Uh, hopefully we'll get some guests on, uh, some notable players, and, and talk about the patch, talk about tournaments uh, around the world. Uh, so let's jump right in to Season 5 Patch. Uh, this is not a very big patch, even though a lot of people are going to talk about it. Um, I have my own feelings. I know Kurt does. We'll save those towards the end, but we'll, we'll jump right into, uh, the first one was the, uh, Lannisters was the first one on the list. Uh, the oh, Hyrule yeah. Sparrow got a change. Uh, the commander for High Sparrow, uh, was... He had insight. Uh, not now he has intimidating presence. Yep. Now he has intimidating presence, which is okay. Um, I don't know, insight was kind of cool too. Highest tech, dice value, uh, but in Tim's good, especially with Lannisters. Not a bad change, right? Do you agree? It's it's a big change. Insight sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim is awesome for and Tim is one of the best abilities in the game and Insight's one of the worst mm -hmm. um, you're better off just having Vicious than you are Insight because Insight's an order whereas Vicious always triggers Yep. And the Insight gives you wound. Vicious and then max dice which with the way that dice profiles are right now it's what a two dice gain max mm -hmm. so yeah no this is a big buff for Sparrow yeah uh, so Again, that I, I think losing insight, good. Gaining intimidating presence, also awesome. Uh, they yeah. changed two of his tactics cards. Uh, same name, just redid them. Uh, they are Mercy of the Mother. Uh, before uh, you didn't remove a token, right? Uh, the first line you didn't. You mean like pull up a side by side? <laughs> I can't uh, yeah, remember. probably. Yeah, it's uh, you had to remove a token. So uh -huh. they added remove a token uh, for the first line. So you remove a token from that unit. They perform, perform a morale test. On a success, restore two wounds to that unit, plus one wound for each of its destroyed ranks. On a failure, restore one wound for that unit. Uh, it was good before. Removing a condition token is way better. <laughs> I mean, a free removal, what's that to like? Um... And then they changed Protection of the Father. Uh, it was a success on the reroll. Now it's just when an enemy is performing melee attack, after rolling defense dice, defender performs one melee, one morale test. On a success, they block plus three hits. On a failure, they block plus one. So before it was just rerolling those, those re -rolls, defense right? dice. Yeah. yeah. Now it's just straight up, oh, you, you passed that morale test, plus three block hits. On a failure, you block plus one. That's pretty awesome. Shield wall on demand. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, the, only, the only problem is pass a morale test with Lannisters don't have the best morale. But if it is High Sparrow Commander, you do have Embolden. Yeah, plus one. Yep. So you, you some of the, some of those are getting a plus one. If you're by a tree, a plus two. That's not that bad. Um, so I, I, I don't think that's bad. I no, it's not bad. bad. It's, it's, it's an improvement. It's just, it's limited, mm -hmm. so to speak. 
but the trigger's nice. Both triggers are easy. No, no crazy triggers, which is nice. Uh, so th those are the two card changes. So Lannister, not very many card changes, not very many commander changes, uh, but they did just two unit changes. Just two awesome unit changes. Well, one awesome. Uh, Knights of or uh, Castle Rock Honor Guard. Uh, they, we'll do them first. Yeah, yeah let's do them first because they are awesome. We'll save the lance for last. Uh, so before they were pretty bad. Uh, nobody ran them. Uh, for no one ran them. No one ran them. You you had to. Remove... And they've been they've been buffed multiple times. So they've gotten a they got a a, a movement speed buff. Yep. They I'm pretty sure had a morale buff. I'm not, I might be most mistaken on that, but now they're bu they're morale five. Uh, now they've they... completely changed how Lannister oppression works. Thank God. <laughs> because before they used to have to remove a condition token to yep. gain a specific ability. Right. So and now, the reason that was so bad is tokens have value on their own. So you, anytime you, wanna, you have to remove a token for something, what you're getting back needs to be worth more than that token itself for that to actually be a good ability. Almost right. double what it's worth because you're you're using something else and the token. So you, now, it, it should be double as, double as good. Another benefit of the change is it's not locked into a specific type of token, right? It can yeah, so let's get go one by default. Yeah. So the Lannister oppression now is each time this unit performs a melee attack, before ro rolling attack dice, choose one. For each token on the defender, choose plus one. Awesome. So you can, if you have, if you rainbowed them, you get four. You get all four. You get vicious is one, sundering is another. Uh, until the end of the turn, defender loses all abilities. Chef's kiss. Uh, this unit may reroll any attack dice. Again, awesome. So Lannisters like putting out tokens. Lannisters like. Rainbowing units all the time, even though Pycel wasn't played very much. Um, well, yeah, they screwed up Pycel. <laughs> that's another story for another day. That's, that's a whole other episode later on down the line. But yeah, so they—that's a super buff for them. Uh, it's a seven-point unit that you might actually consider taking a three plus five plus with a five move. You can't complain about that. I know as a Baratheon player, you probably will, but. Oh, yeah. That three plus armor with a five plus move is pretty. Well, it, like it used to be a rare thing. Now it's like starting to become like more common. It's like, all right, Shadow Tower Spears, seven points, three up armor, five move. Castly Rock Honor Guard, three up armor, five movement speed. And we haven't gotten to them yet, but we will um, right after this when we get into Starks. Uh, Tully Sworn Shields, mm -hmm. moving to five movement speed. Meanwhile, Rose Knights and Queensmen. Uh, they remain sad at speed four. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, again, I was surprised. Like everybody else is getting the the five plus speed with the three plus save. Why not? Yeah. Why not spread it evenly around? Why not? Yeah. I mean, everything is so homogeneous now that like, why wouldn't you? Because it seems like they're you know every seven point infantry, you know has. You know, seven six five attack profile, three up armor, five morale. It's like the ability is different, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's like the last thing that hasn't been normalized across the board it seems to be the movement speed, and it's really only one faction that seems to be punished for this for, for whatever reason. Apparently, Brathians are slow. Know, Bra Brathians well, are well, bad at wearing armor, and Lannisters are good at wearing armor. I don't know. <laughs> We'll get we'll get to the sorrows of Baratheon players here in a second. Uh, I think so, the main thing to keep in mind for later on in this stream is the change to Lannister oppression and how good it is that it no longer costs a token. Yep. Because something costing a token matters, and that'll come up later. Um, <laughs> shall we move into Lance? Yeah. And this Lance, is kind of true yeah, for all factions. Yeah, Lance yeah, lost so, one die on max rank. Yep. That's so it. now when they charge, you can. it's a 5-4 profile. So when they charge, it's only 9 dice max. 
uh, with a was it Steins? Or, uh, I, I think the bigger that. impact is that it's only five when you're stuck in engaged. Yeah, so if you do get bogged down, you, you're only going to have five attacks. Uh, it really on last rank really pushes the player to try to pull their lance cab out to cycle charge them and not just leave them bogged in, um, yeah. which was a problem with um, Tully Cavaliers more so than. Uh, nice Castle Rock, but well, I think with Knights Castle Rock, they had their they had their own problem, kind of with the Tywin combo being a bit oppressive. Mm -hmm. This well, this think, might go a little ways to helping alleviate that. Uh, I think it will. I think that the it's not as much of an alpha strike unit anymore. Um, it, you can almost use it as your finisher because you're not you're not going to one shot them. You might with knights and Tywin and expending everything with Tywin, you might one shot mm -hmm. the unit. Uh, but yeah, it's most, still it's still there but it's it's harder. Yeah, much harder. I mean, you have to fail all 9. You have to hit all 9, you have to fail all 9, then you have to crit fail the panic test. I mean, that that's rough. Even with sundering and all the crazy stuff Lannisters have, it's still going to be rough. Uh, Lannisters probably still have the best uh, best bet at one shotting a unit, I think. Right? I mean, mm. I mean, maybe uh, potentially just because just because of the cards they can play with it, I think is is the the biggest bonus and the NCU. They that, could, if the, yeah, they could run Gregor Commander, ensure that they have all nine hits, mm -hmm. go through with price of failure. Yeah. Yep, and then. Uh, hear me roar! You can piggyback on top of all that shit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, you can you can steamroll that to get to get that one shot. But most lance units now are not going to be your alpha strike. Um, so yeah, so again, lance across the board. Uh, if you were a lance unit, you got kind of kicked with the nerf bat, um, hitting your shin a little bit. You lost the dice. Not that bad. Uh, it helps some other it helps other units later on down the road though. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's go on to Starks. the next. Yep, Starks are next. Uh, this is a across the board change uh, mm -hmm. for hidden traps. Hidden uh, traps. You, you want to go Lost ahead and do hit. hidden traps? Just one less hit than I don't used to do. Yeah. Yep, just one, which is nice. The plus one hit taking four, I think, was rough. That's a it was an ability that I think the community found irritating. Um, Still on any know. action. I think a shift. I don't think... I don't know. I, I think the shot... The shift is, is weird to trap. I don't know. Still the hits didn't me bug sometimes. me so much as the um, the movement speed abuses do, but I'm you know, I'm coming from this from like a Korathian perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're moving uh, one through a bog. It's like, I know that like <laughs> players who would use like five up armor ranger hunters, ah, hidden traps. Uh, if you had like three up armor units, it, you just shrug it off. It was like, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. But like you, you would, you, you, you would see what you would see is you would see it spammed. And with yeah. certain free folk builds, they could deny engagement so that the traps could always trigger, and they would just will you, whittle you away, whittle you away. And it was it was just an annoying ability. Um, yeah. Now it's a little bit less, and we might not see it as often. <laughs> so, hopefully, I, I think you're right. I think the we might see it a little less, just because of what free folk and everybody else gets down the line. We might see less of those. Um, Again, a, another change that was kind of... Did they change Warcry across the board? They changed Warcry from Brendan Tully. Did they change Warcry across sure the board? They sure did. They did. I don't know. Did they? I don't know. We'll have to look. I know that they did for um, for Targs. They used it for any Unsullied, which, will again, will go. So Warcry, it used to be... Um, when a friendly combat unit activates, perform one morale, morale test. You can be panicked if on excess, panicked or vulnerable. Uh, it used to be if it was the commander, you got to pick, or it came both, uh, panicked and vulnerable. Now they changed it. If it is a House Tully unit, 
on a success, you get both of them. So Tully affiliation will finally mean something. Yay! <laughs> I, I like I like it. I I like using the affiliations finally. Yeah, it's something that they like stepped away from ever since the I want to say like the twenty twenty one update. Um, cause like click gain affiliation used to mean a lot more and, uh, totally affiliations always been floating around there, but like Mormont affiliation, right. That's mm -hmm. always been a thing or, you know, I, I, I think using, using what you have in a, and, and twisting it a little bit, giving it a little bit more spin. I think that helps with the flavor and the, the opportunity to do like when I saw, I saw the change, I immediately went to, ooh, can I do an all-house Tully force? Can I do an all-unsullied uh, force and make it worth, worth it? Probably. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Uh, so I, I, think, I think using those, those affiliations helps. Um, all right, so the next uh, card that they changed was Cranog Traps, which I'm kind of glad they did because there was a lot of confusion with the way they worded it. Um, and if you see, they changed the trigger from a activation. Uh, so when a unit activates, you would play this card um, and it suffered a minus one if it was within long range of a Cranog minute, uh, unit. And if it wasn't, or if it wasn't in long range, if you declared a maneuver, march, or retreat action, you suffered dangerous terrain test. When you play that on cavalry, before the change, you basically, your cavalry had to sit. Because who's taken double D3 plus one wounds on their cavalry before they make a charge or before they move? Not me. How about you, Kurt? You take two. Oh, that of sounds no bueno, yeah. <laughs> with a cab, which I don't understand why Howland wasn't being played, especially in the heavy cab meadow that we're, we were in. Like, I didn't understand why he wasn't being played more, maybe just because other stuff was better. I don't know. Um, but they did change it. So uh, the change helps, um, but it still is a little confusing and it's a little hard with the timing. So now the trigger is. When an enemy performs a maneuver, march, or retreat action, before resolving that action, it suffers minus one to hit, minus one movement this turn. If the enemy is in long range of a friend, friendly Kranog man unit, uh, it is treated as moving th through difficult terrain this turn. So no choice anymore. You just take it. With the cav, you'll get a second choice to move, but because you don't have to declare both. But you'll have to declare your free maneuver. Then they'll play this card. Then you'll get your yep. minus one. And if you're within long range of the Cranog, you'll take a dangerous train test. Then it's kind of like Quaith. Yes. It's after, it's after they say what it is they're going to do. Exactly. Thank you. Because the other way was a pain in the butt. And they could be on the other side of the, the battlefield and they play that card. Oh, they're not within long range. Well, I don't care about the minus one to hit. It's the double calf move that you take D2, D3 plus one wounds. That, that's rough. They're also getting minus one to move. So that's yeah, it, it, this is in addition to. So everything that I, I like the change makes it a little bit more streamlined, like you said gets it more in line with that Quaith, you declare your action first, then I play the card, then I trigger Quaith, whatever. Um, what do you think? Uh, still hurts Cav. Still hurts Cav. It's a, it's a good card. It's a commander card. Commander card should be good. Mm -hmm. It's a D3 plus one wounds on a card. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you, TA. Attack and mm -hmm. coach. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> so, uh, a good change. Uh, it, it was a good change. Um, because basically, the other way, you, you basically bog down a unit across the board uh, with no maneuvers. Uh, and, and that 
that was no fun for a whole turn. Your unit got, it. and then if they have Sansa and they have other ways to go get cards, oh, yeah, they could go get it back again. Yeah, they could get they recycle that thing so many times, and every turn you're basically your your eight point heavy cav unit basically sits there and does nothing all game because if it doesn't, you're taking at a minimum four wounds at a maximum you're taking eight wounds that's a lot of wounds that's more than a rank no, it um, does there is a long range requirement yeah which is it's, which is not nice. global but yeah. yes which is nice again with the change the change is much better the change is more in line with where we think it probably should be yeah um next one is superior positioning for rob is this just for Rob, or is this all superior positioning? I believe it's all superior positioning, because they changed it for Martell's, too. And Martell's? Yep. Uh, I don't know what else they changed it, and we'll get through those. But I'm pretty sure it's a global change. Uh, so I I like it. We'll, we'll go through it, because the old yeah, one... Yeah, it's a lot stronger now. Yeah. ...was not as good. Old one was basically... It was uh, a pitchable card, yeah. Yeah, you, you just... You just Unless someone was charging you and you had it in your hand, you never used it. So before, it was when an enemy performs a charge action, if that enemy charges you in the front... It has to be in the front, yeah. Yep. They suffer disorderly charge on a three plus, or a three or less, uh, and they become vulnerable. That was the old one. Okay, the new one is the same thing, except that now... If it's Rob's unit... Yeah, it's a kicker. Then it's five or less. Then they suffer the disorderly charge on a five or less, no matter what the charge requirement is. That's badass. Yeah, so there's still two, you know, two loophole or two two uh, obstacles, two qualifiers for it to overcome. But that second qualifier is now much more likely, right? Yes. Yep. the The first one. Now, here's the thing. So if they roll three or less, they still get the uh, disorderly, or they still get the vulnerable, right? And if no, they roll five... Oh, or... uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if they suffer disorderly, then... So they... then, if they roll five on Rob's, do they still become vulnerable? Yes, because it's, it's whether it's disorderly or not. Okay. I like it. I like it on... Martell's because Martell's, as you see later, when they get it changed, uh, they they're a little bit more lenient with who it's targeted by. Com- any basically commanders, I think it is. But we'll yeah, see. we'll get there when we get there. Yep. Uh, so then we go to their units. Uh, these are again Hidden global traps changes and lamps. Yep, yeah. global changes, oh, super that's... easy. Hidden traps. They lost the one. Yada yada, Lance lost the dice. Big thing um, for the Starks is sword shields go to movement five. Well, and here's another thing. Here's another big thing, and we'll talk about. I, I kind of wanted to get into this. Um, the community really has a problem with these Tully Cavaliers and the combos that you can run together with them with the Winterfell Guardian uh, that you put in. Is it Winterfell Guardian? Winterfell yeah. Champ? Yeah. Uh, it's Winterfell uh, Guardian. And then um, Ed. As the NCU, which auto passes and heals. Yeah, there was, oh gosh, there was something I wanted to do at the start of the show. I forgot until just now. Go ahead. Um, you're, you're kind of bringing it up. Um, we know more or less what's in this patch. We've looked at it. We've talked about it. Um, so I think there's like two questions for this patch. Does it hit problem areas that people have identified from season four and if it does players have identified more competitive players and if it does does it address them satisfactorily right so if we were going into this blind what are what are like this like the top three things that you'd think uh probably balon ncu balon the the healing engine of tully cav and then for me, I think Targ should always be the best, one of the best factions in the game. So Targs. So yeah, been, changes to the Targs deck because their deck is what changes to the Targs in general. 
right. was, was so those one would of be my like wishes. The three things, those, those would be the three things wishes. you'd want to see um, as a Baratheon player. I think some things I wanted to see were like, yes, universally, I think I agree on Balon. Um, I think Tully Cavaliers, that kind of dipping into the healing and grinding um, play style that wasn't really meant for them it was problematic. And then I wanted to see changes for some of the weaker, weaker Baratheon commanders, like Stannis King at the Wall, Andrew Estermont, and Davos. Like, those were the guys. So, here, right, right, here at the first one, they did do something with Tully Cavaliers. So we can well, say... They did something with Lance Cav, and Tully Cavalier fell into that. Yes. They really so did, now... They really didn't address the problem that we all have with right. Tully Cavaliers. It doesn't matter how many attacks they have. It's that right. damn healing. Like, it might. Like we said, you might not want to sit there only throwing five dice, right? Yeah, yeah. but even with six But dice, outside of that, outside of that, you're right. It didn't fix the problem that was the healing engine from Rally Banner, from Winterfell Guardian, from Ed, Ned, NCU. Ned or whatever, Ed, Ned. Or, yeah. So they can still sit there. They can still grind which isn't really what you want Lance Cav to be doing. So or just sitting there uh, getting abused and not dying. That's mm. that's something that Lance Cav don't usually do. That's something more like a Cots, uh, a Champions of the Stag would do. Someone that's that's not meant for speed and quick hits. Mm -hmm. Like a Lance Cav would be made to do. So we would um, say yes, they did something. But we would say no. They didn't solve the root problem of the healing of it. this one thing that was on our list, right? Yes. yes. And yeah. as as a community, I feel like it, it's it, it gets some of those times gets abused with with the the skew lists, and everybody kind of gets up in an uproar about one thing. But I think this really is 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 a bad thing. Because um, in a round, you can heal. Oh, God. Uh, you get how many it's from Rally Banner? Something like that. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's two, three, four, four a turn from getting attacked. That's ridiculous. And, and that's just from getting attacked, and that's not without bags or anything else that they run on you. Um, mm -hmm. So that's our little rant on Tully Cavalier. Uh <laughs> That they didn't touch. Um, and then we, we kind of move on to the Sworn Swords, which you touched on. Uh, they changed it to... A, they're very fast in their armor. They can run very fast. Those, <laughs> those Tully uh, Sworn Shields. Uh, they have a movement five uh, with three armor. Uh, a 754 profile, even. Uh, so a little less, but they're a six-point unit. Uh, so... <laughs> Remember way back, was it 1.5, 1 1.6? 1 it, was, it was like way back. Tully Storm Shields were seven points. Mm -hmm. And then they made them six points. And I think they changed their to hit value from three to four, four. right? Yep. And now we see these little buffs to Tully Storm Shields. <laughs> incrementally inching their way back to where it's like, I almost feel like they're a seven point unit again. Just give them three plus to hit and make them seven points again at this point. If, if they did, if they did, uh, sorry, I had to fix my headphones. If they did make them three plus, they would be a seven point unit. Uh, with stubborn yeah. tenacity and shield wall. Stubborn tenacity and shield wall. Those are two great abilities. And a six plus uh, morale. Five movement like, speed, three armor, six morale. Yeah. Seven five four is a good profile. Make mm -hmm. you hit on threes, make them seven points. Like, I mean, who are they in competition for at six points? There, there's such a log jam of Stark units at six points. Yeah, there's like bruisers and she bears and bruisers, she bears, and, everything. And wolves, oh my, <laughs> or however it is. Uh, so that's Starks um, again. A little lackluster, I feel like, for Starks. Um, one of the things that I think kind of drove them to the top was the healing engine. Um, and still it, exists. And it's still there. 
Um, so that was a kind of a strike one. Um, don't want to call it a strike strike. I, I, it is a strike, actually. Not strike one. Um, but most of those changes so far were pretty good. Okay? So little buffs. I like. I like little things. Mm -hmm. They're little buffs. tweaks. They're nothing major, but... Spe okay, and before we move on to Free Folk, I do have to say, okay. and both of us agree to this, this is probably one of the greatest balance this game has been in a long time. Loved season four. I think season yes. four was peak. Yeah, it, it, it was. It, it was good. Um, mm -hmm. There wasn't very much wrong with it. So to have big, giant changes, I I don't agree with. Um, I think they made the right amount of changes to about sixty five percent of what they were supposed to. Um, I will agree with the main thrust, which is small changes, limited number of changes. Um, I would have liked to have seen, and you know, this could, could this could be something we talk about towards the end of the video, really. Yep, sure. um, I would have liked to have seen more of those changes be directed towards attachments. Um, Cause this, from what we were told was supposed to be a commander and attachment patch. All right. And so really, yeah, I, I would have liked to see more on the attachment front. Yeah, I agree. And the commander front. Or next time, don't say anything and just say yeah. there's going to be a patch and then people aren't going to complain. <laughs> don't, give people, right. don't mislead people. Yeah, just don't say shit. <laughs> when, when it better, it's better off just to not say anything and surprise. Ah, there it is. All right, so free folk. No. Uh. <laughs> uh, I play a little bit of free folk. You do not. You play against some free folk, right? You got a free folk. I have player. some local players that play free folk but okay. we've never we've never had like abusive free folk so even when mance was number one you know undisputed king of the seven kingdoms right um our local scene never had like a free folk problem nice so um, we were fortunate in that regard so they changed a lot of stuff for free folk. Well, a lot of attachments. Maybe that's where they get their attachments from. They did change oh. a shit ton of attachments for free folk. Um, so they changed, of course, Baroque with their hidden traps change. Uh, was the only change there. Uh, good, thank God. We all agree. Uh, he's still two points. Uh, we'll go down to the Jarl. We'll leave the Eagle for when we do Skin Changer. Uh, the Jarl. I think it's now, pronounced Jarl, right? Jarl, whatever. You know I'm bad. <laughs> That's why I have my critical thinking co-host with. Me. That's what I'm here for, baby. To help pronounce shit and make sure that I am not saying something stupid. Um, <laughs> so Jarl, uh, he has outflank. Uh, now the big change to this is that now he ignores the usual attachment limits. Thank you. Like everybody else, right? Any of those outflank with Martels, any of the new guys, all ignore those attachment limits. Good change. Mm -hmm. Gives you some cool things you can do with, with Free Folk. Yeah, it, uh, it, it helps outflank gain some, 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 some flexibility, some possibilities, you know. And you can way outnumber your opponent with activations, so outflank. For free folk is not a bad option. Not bad. No, you throw them in some kind of spear wives, charge someone off the flank. That would be a pain in the ass to deal with. Especially if you had your commander in there with a yarl, that'd be a that'd be torment, torment in that thing. Man, see you later. <laughs> um, all right, and then they did chains mance because here's another global change. Boisterous Charisma changed for everyone that has Boisterous Charisma across the board. No more. Oh, you can't target me. What targets what? Does this target me? No, it targets you. Oh, no. Target, it targets the target from the target. Well, this it, uh, it, 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 uh, it, it, it sidesteps a very awkward conversation. And you know what? Now it's a token. Here you go. Well, honestly... It was a pain in the ass to it, deal it with. It was. Yeah. And it was, it was a good idea.
because there were a lot of weird cards that were coming out with Martells, and that's about when that that boisterous charisma started moving, gaining ground, was when Martells would come out with Rising Temps. Oh, you want a Rising Temples with me? Nope, you're not doing it. Um, so I, I like it. Um, I don't know if a token is worth it. Um, maybe it could have been like a war cry. I don't know. Without the without the shout, I don't know. I don't know what else they could have done there for boisterous charisma. Um, maybe it's remove. Still, it's, Go ahead. It's an innate ability, so that's mm-hmm. something. Yeah. Why would you even make that innate ability though? I don't know. <laughs> Was it innate before? Was it? No. Oh yes, it was innate before. <laughs> okay, so it's probably just a carryover. It's probably just a <laughs> They just left. They just left the icon there. Yeah. yeah well. So yeah. <laughs> some people have been. So there's been a term. Some people have been throwing around. Um, the, the word "lazy" has been thrown around. I think maybe, maybe we're seeing a little bit of that here. Yeah, maybe. Or, again. This is I don't it's war that can't be shut off. Weakened <laughs> instead of vulnerable. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe make counter strategy innate. I don't know. <laughs> why? Yeah. Why not? Uh, all all right. right. So it's 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 a change. Yeah, uh, it's, that that's a weird one to me. Um, I know they wanted to get I around. Think, I think I think, I think all around, all... Go ahead. Good, good change because just less targeting debate. Yeah, and any kind of targeting questions that any kind of card arises, thank you for changing it. Because as a TO, it's a pain in the butt it, to try yes. and figure it out. Um, until we clarify exactly, everybody can see it in black and white. What exactly targets what? And and I think with some of these cards, the way they worded them. They worded them better because it does say target defender, target attacker, mm-hmm. target. So it's giving you that they've learned, I think, from some of these. And they're, they're, they're taking a step forward, which I think is a good idea. Um, so the next we'll jump into is the skin changer. And that's where the eagle and the wolf and our friendly oh my bear. bear comes in. So they changed the skin changer. Uh, they took away stalwart. stalwart. Yep. yep. So that's that's good. That was a good change. Yes, because free folk don't need stalwart. But you want to say it? Why does the fair bear have three up armor? <laughs> so they change they change skin changer. So now let's let's go through the, what the skin changer says. So now it says before you got to pick it when the unit attacked. Right? Is that how it went? You got to, or at the when beginning of the activation, the beginning of the game, or I don't know, yeah. you got to, you got to decide which one each, each beginning of the round, what you wanted, or or when you attacked, or whatever. Uh, now they they changed it. They made it simpler. Uh, it's when a unit is deployed, select the bear, eagle, or wolf. Uh, see that unit's card for additional effects. Uh, when this unit is destroyed, remove remove its bottom to the animal. Doesn't say a lot, but it means a lot. So now, when you deploy your unit with the skin changer, you have to select what you want for the entire game. You do not get to switch. It is what it is. So you can have the eagle, which they did change, didn't they? Um, it gives precision now, I think, uh, for the eagle. Uh, let me go back. Um, so it used yeah, to be so, just the two-inch shift. Now yeah. it's... Shift now you precision. get the shift and the precision. So more reason um, to take the eagle now than before. Yep, so a little bit more, um, but not against everything else. The wolf, kind of cool. I like it. Uh, it's now predator's instinct. Each time this unit charges, it suffers a disorderly charge. Oh, wait, yeah, this unit charges. Yeah, it suffers a dis- disorderly charge on one or two. Each time an enemy performs a melee attack, on this unit, their attack gains vicious. When the model skin changer unit charges this unit, they may re-roll any charged attack dice. Pretty cool. Not bad. And bear. 
and you have to skip a page if you're going through the bear. That. Yeah, we'll go back to the cards. The bear. Must the be bear a Baratheon was... bear. <laughs> I don't know what they were smoking <laughs> when they took they put a three plus armor on a goddamn bear. The bear was well, a five two. Before. <laughs> I mean, hold on. The bear was a five two. That's a bear. You're not going to scare a bear, but a bear isn't wearing a sheet of fucking plate. <laughs> like, it's just not. And it's, I don't care what kind of bear it is. I don't it's care been it's a, trained by Roderick Cassell in arms. It's I, I really well versed in combat. Yeah, like, this bear is like the king of the, of the north. Like, I, I don't get it. But, all right, so they changed the bear. The bear is a unit now. Uh, the bear has three wounds. The bear moves four. The bear has now three attacks. Before, it was one attack, and you had no defense. No defense saves. So it was mm -hmm. basically a two-plus, I think, auto wound. I think it was. Two or three, I can't remember. But um, the, so when, when you select the bear, you deploy it fully within short range of a friendly unit at least one inch from an enemy unit. Well, I don't know how else you would deploy it. I guess if you did, like, outflank with them. Yeah. Oh, that would be a pain in the ass. Uh, yeah. Outflanking a skin uh, changer yeah. bear Remember with Detachment something? limitations. Oh, Jesus yep. Christ. Ugh. All right, so the bear can, <laughs> the bear can outflank you, too. It's fast oh, bear. Bears. Knows oh, how to bears. run. No, only yeah. speed four. <laughs> well, it's... Raffian bears. It. Baratheon bears. So at the start of the round, if the bear is not within short range of a friendly unit, it's destroyed. Okay, I get it. So it just says friendly unit. It doesn't say the bonded unit. It does not say the bonded unit. So you could have two bears go live happily ever after. Just bear buddies. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, they're not a zero to one unit, which I wish they were. Um, so, hopefully this gets FAQ'd. Hopefully they don't let two bears go hold hands and go terrorize people. Um, that would be a pain in the ass. Um, hopefully... I, don't I, even I care think it's a big... Go ahead. I, I was going to say, I don't even care if it's the bonded unit. As long as it's not another bear, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Like, seriously, I understand that you can stack the bears then all the way across the board, so you have to kill this one to kill that one, but that's also a pain in the butt for whoever is trying to figure out where their stuff is going to hit. If you kill that one, then they lose their bear on that side. Whatever. But to have it, say, a friendly unit, it just doesn't, and this is now a unit, it just doesn't make sense. I think the problem... That's gonna the biggest problem that's gonna arise from this is you're gonna have these bears body blocking. Yep. And it no. was already difficult enough to get engaged with free folk who are already gonna out activate you with twelve activation list. Now they can have twelve bears. You know. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. And we're not even to the end of it. Hold on, we're not even done. Yeah. So so now when it activates the bear has to activate. Bonded skin unit, when that dude activates, they got to activate. Mm -hmm. So it's not another activation. You still piggyback it off that one. But yeah. enemies engaged with this unit, engaged with the bear, with a single bear, suffer minus one to their defense rolls. And it's sundering. And it's sundering. And it's sundering. So we got super sundering bear. Double Sunder. With a three plus armor. And it gives no victory points when you kill it. Yeah, no victory points. Okay, it only has three, three, only three wounds, wounds. But it has a but... three plus armor, and you're not making it fail a panic test. It's a three plus morale. It's a damn bear. I, I... And the fact yeah, that you can... Three up armor will block more than... More than half. half the hits. Yeah. More so than half. So a seven, a, uh, even... And your pan, a three-up panic, you're not going to be failing panic tests. No, no. 
it's going to take more than one attack to kill You're, a bear. It's going to take, you, on average, at least two attacks. And, and to kill something that's worth nothing, you might as well... And they're, they're going to be body blocking you, so they'll start them either behind them and they'll leapfrog them and keep leapfrogging each mm -hmm. other because the bases are so small. You could leapfrog yep. one infantry over the, the monster base. So you have a very short window to try and get your unit to charge whatever and that's not even that's not even going into all the other advantages that small unit trays have because like you said small unit tray you can leapfrog friendly units even with a even with a movement four you march right through them that's eight inches march, uh, you can hide them in forests so that they can't be charged by someone outside of the forest well can you can you charge in i thought you couldn't just shoot into a forest i thought you could charge you can't you can't you have to have line of sight to charge. Oh, that's right. Ugh. So you can hide them in a forest and make your opponent take a horse or their activation to get into the forest before they can charge you. Then they can charge you and attack you. And that attack probably won't kill you. It'll take a second attack to kill you. Yeah. It's it's not going to be good. It was super sundering. Um, super sundering bears. <laughs> yeah. So if there was only one of them, not a big deal. But we know how everybody is. We, 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 we min max we, everything. We're one day into this patch, and we look at this, and this is something ripe for abuse. Yeah, like it doesn't take us long to figure that out. No, and and skin changer is not a zero to one. None of these extra animals are a zero to one or a zero to two or whatever. Put at, and skin this, changer. Skin changer is a one point attachment. You can throw them in raiders. Raiders have adaptives. There's a zero-point attachment, a zero-point bear. Zero-point bear that gives zero points when destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Thank goodness Stalwart went away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. If you're trying to... I see what you're trying to do. Bears are cool. I would love to play with bears. I have a bunch of them back there. I would love to play with them. I think you went a little too far there. That was too big of a buff to give everybody a bear. And if you don't see that everybody wants to take that thing, I would take it in any army you have for one you point. Take multiple, yeah. I would take that I would take that for two points. For I would take that thing for two points, wouldn't you? Yeah, I like I like I like it better than the DSN almost, you know? <laughs> It's a four-point unit. <laughs> Moves the same, doesn't he? Moves the same. <laughs> Double sundering. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't well, maybe, know. Maybe, 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 maybe this is a new design philosophy based around the availability problems they have with the day. <laughs> maybe they're counting on people not being able to get more than one bear. Or maybe they're trying to get rid of all the bears. Maybe, maybe they're trying to get rid of all the bears. Like Golden Company Swords, they give you Golden Company Swords for, like, what, three or four months? Let's empty out the, our stock of Golden Company Swords. Oh, we'll change them back afterwards. Isn't that the GW way? Sell it, sell know. it, sell it while it's high, then cut it down at its knees after you sold it all. Anyway... We digress. Let we us digress. move on Let to... Us, hidden Traps, we know what that did. Yeah, Hidden Traps. So their card changes. Uh, free Folk got mm -hmm. three card changes. Yeah, Free Group Reform. Mm -hmm. What changed with... The only thing, and I, I and we'll put them up it's here. Just as usual instead of as normal? <laughs> yeah, I, I looked over it and I went line or word for word and the only word is usual. Mm-hmm. In parentheses. Yeah. So that didn't change. No. I, I don't know what... I don't know someone... Someone, when they were interpreting English to whatever, they couldn't understand usual to whatever Maybe. It was. Maybe. It yeah. was weird. Um, yeah. Enrage. <clears throat> Enrage changed to... Uh, just adding a weekend, right? Uh, it was before just... Uh, 
it was just a panic, right? <clears throat> when they would charge, when a friendly, uh, let's just read it. Start of a friendly monster unit's activation. activation. That unit suffers two wounds. Until the end of turn, that unit may re-roll any attack dice and defenders become panicked and weakened. So I'm pretty sure it was just panic before. Uh, so they added the weakened. Extra tokens is always good. Can't bitch about extra tokens. So here's the other weird one. Uh, I, I'm i sure you kind of liked it because now it makes it... I do. A, a I do. I think more your this style. might be my favorite thing in the patch is Bitter Demise. Yep. So they... Steer. Go ahead. Steer has changed this card. When an infantry, your cavalry unit destroyed. So it doesn't work on monster units. Mm-hmm. Before removing that unit, it performs one melee attack using its highest attack die value. If it targets Steer's unit, it may reroll attack dice. So it no longer is dealing hits based on wounds suffered, which was considered OP in the Free Folk faction, where you have all these wounds, because you're a horde army, that die easily because they're cheap fodder, and people were using that as a basis to criticize Final Strike, to say that Final Strike was too strong of a card, which was then, by proxy, hurting the Baratheons, whose Final Strike typically doesn't deal that many hits, because they're more heavily armored units, they're more higher quality units, uh, and so there was some worry that Final Strike might be changed at the detriment of Baratheon players to make Free Folk more fair. This seems to circumvent that whole dilemma by just taking away Final Strike from Free Folk and giving them Bitter Demise instead. I think this is a brilliant solution. Um, thumbs up for me. I agree. Um... I think, like before, we were talking about changing... They, they changed Boisterous Charisma to get away from the targeting bull crap they were running into. I feel like this they did kind of for the community. People were complaining about, like you said, all the stuff. Uh, cheap, cheap dudes getting used, wiping out with Final Strike, wiping out almost the whole unit. Um, that, that was a pain in the butt. So, again, good change. Bitter Demise. Nice card. Not too strong, um, and not a throwaway card. Super cool. All right, the rest of the Free Folk units, uh, they did change the Savage Giant. The Savage Giant was one dice with a four plus to hit, right? And then, or with a two plus to hit, and he you suffered wounds based on how many wounds he had extra right right um okay so that was cool yes but this kind of brings in line i think more of what they're going for um Mm -hmm. because you get some dice uh it's more interaction i feel like uh so they changed it to vicious um same thing before suffers two unblocked hits uh, only two wounds from panic test. Gave it vicious. It had before, I believe. Uh, gains one attack dice for each wound that it suffered. Awesome. The panic token new. Yep, panic token is new. That's that's a new addition. Yep, and then so you don't get to roll defense dice either. Uh, if you're successfully charged by it, you become panic. Makes sense. Big giant fucking charging right at you. It's gonna scare you. Um, but they did change his attack profile from that one dice with a two plus to hit to four dice with a three plus to hit. Because um, it was a D3, wasn't it? Yeah, it was D... No, D3 plus was, wounds? Yeah, slumber. D3 plus wounds is what it was, you're right. So yeah, this is better. This is more yeah. consistent. You're not going to have giant swing and only do one wound anymore like you did. Yeah. I, yeah good, good changes. I, I like it. I like it. I think that you can now, you you want to use a giant as kind of your battering ram. You want him to charge. You want him to get to throw that panic dice out. Now you got, if he takes a couple shots from an arrow barrage, he's got a wound or two on him. He's throwing five dice with no defense rolls. See you later, Iron, uh, Iron Makers. 
right through you. Um, <laughs> I, I like it. I, I think it's good. Uh, makes me want to play a giant, honestly. Um, what about you? Make you want to play a giant? I played against giants. <laughs> <laughs> makes you not want to play against a giant? Especially as a Baratheon player, technically no. <laughs> you know, if, if 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 I did, I would have my my trusty tactical approach to uh, get past those two unblocked hit rule with my yep. wounds. So thank goodness that didn't change. Harma's Vanguard. Harma's Vanguard. Harma's Vanguard. Only change was now their planned approach. Uh, you don't need to charge now. Um, so before you had to charge to be able to be not targeted by enemy effects or abilities or orders or whatever the hell uh, they're calling it this week. Uh, but now it's start of any turn, target one friendly unit in long range until the end of the turn. That unit may not be targeted by enemy effects or abilities. Um, so they just tweaked it a little bit. I like it. Way nicer. Uh, missed opportunity. Really? What do you? Why do you think? Say that. They're still speed five. You want them speed six? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I think they. I think they're more reluctant to give more speed to free folk when they saw what think, happened with chariots. I think they should be faster than chariots. Horses mm. should be faster than dogs who are pulling a sled. You're right. Yeah, you're probably right. Especially, what's the what's the the chariot's armor save? Isn't it a five? I forget. Or is it a six? Yeah. But these guys are armor six, so yeah, they're as light as, as light can be. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, they probably should have been six. Um, everything oh, well. else on everything else on them stayed the same though. So, the the, the order change I think was. Was was nice, um, but again, like you said, moving them to a, a speed five probably or speed six was probably a, a perfect opportunity there. All right, well, let's move on to our famed neutrals. Do we want to go <laughs> to skip neutrals? Well, the only thing we, we'll go through real quick. Um, <sighs> the only thing will the only thing that really changed is motivated motivated by coin. Um, so they added uh, Prey on Fear onto Roos, and they took Prey on away Fear lost intimidating, intimidating presence. presence. Kind Feels of sucks. like a nerf. Yeah. I oh, don't know. Is that, is that different from Bolton Roos? Of course they don't um, have them next to each other. I, I don't down. know. I don't think they changed Bolton Roos. I'm scrolling down real quick. Yeah, it's all the way at the bottom. Yeah, so Bolton Roos stayed the same. So okay. it's just neutral Roos that this change went to. That's weird. Uh, Maybe they forgot it again. It's a little bit of a nerf there. Um, yeah. So motivated by coin yeah. changed. Which I didn't really understand motivated by coin. Just the way... Really, is it... Fr because they kept saying that unit and everybody was that unit. So everybody was saying, oh, then everybody can attack. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it seems like just a clarification text change. Yeah. So, okay, so. they changed. Neat. They went through and changed Biter. Um, he went to zero points from one point. That was a big thing. Uh, Joking, the new, Joking, the new guy, Commander, that ruined everybody's life for so long. Like, Two weeks. For a hot minute there, yeah. Yes. Uh, he lost his Overwatch. Good. Yeah. Uh, I think both of them, his commander and didn't he have it on his two point was he had Overwatch too, I think. Yeah, uh, I suppose. Yeah, so he lost Overwatch. Now he gets his attachment is two points to gain precision. Woo! That's a two point worth it. And then... <laughs> Boulder's boisterous charisma on Golden Company Officer changed back to the poor Same man's war was... cry. Did they gain Dauntless or did they already have Dauntless? They already had Dauntless. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Yeah, it was just a charisma change. 
Um, and then their tactics cards. Uh, they had one tactics cards change, uh, which was if you're keeping the man alive, uh, just gives you an extra wound, right? Is that it? Yeah, if if your enemy, if that enemy is in short range of Roos's unit, you get plus one wounds. That's cool. Again, okay. calling out the units and their commanders, giving a little bonus to those little pieces. Yeah, Storm you know, Code Dervishes, five morale. What the fuck? I think they were five morale before. No. <laughs> yes. They were seven. Were they? They were I, seven. They got buffed to four. six. They were six in season four. And now they're five. Yeah. Wow. We're taking like one of like the least brave or most like financially motivated units and we're making them like the most ride or die unit in the game now like, what's going on? <laughs> it just doesn't feel thematic to me i don't understand the five i guess because nobody was taking them at seven points maybe yeah i don't know maybe they're just trying to sweeten the pot uh, I wouldn't. Whatever. It's it's not where I would have gone with it. If 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 I wanted to encourage people to take this unit more, I mean, I guess they're running out of space on the right hand side of that card. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have done something with their attack. You know. Yeah. I don't know what else you could have done. You're right. They got a whole ton of crap, and they're a neutral unit, so everybody can take them. So you can't make them too damn good. Hmm. But they are pretty good, but you don't see a lot of people taking them. Six speed. Six speed. Five four armor. armor. Yep. Ten on threes. I mean, they're not bad. Free retreat. Yeah. Free retreat and ambush if they charge something on the side. There's all kinds of stuff you can play with there. I don't know. Maybe maybe we're just missing the boat there. Um, and then Stormcrow Mercs, uh, they just, again, motivated by coin change this shit up. Alright, so now for your favorite. Oh. Night's Watch. They changed everything. They're back to their normal cards. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, no, wait. Sorry. No, they didn't. I was lying. Uh, hidden Traps changed. <laughs> they changed Hidden Traps on Benjen. Anything Ooh. else changed on Benjen? Uh, no, that's it. They just... I know, I still I, I still think Mountain Benjen's a solid commander. Oh, he is. He's really good. I'd much, I'd much rather have him than Mounted Stannis. Yeah. Oh, he's good. I mean, even his his cards are good. His lying in wait, even as a mounted commander. He has Marshall good. too, right? Yep. Uh, Marshall's I a great so. card. Yep. yep. So Night's Watch tactics. So Benjen got his global change of hidden traps, getting kicked in the balls a little bit. Uh, they changed three Night's Watch tactics cards. Not the changes a lot of us were hoping for as Night's Watch players. Um, we still think, as a Night's Watch player, we, I, I still think all of your cards falling off when you fail a paying test is a pain in the ass. Um, I think it should be one, but that's just me. I know you probably disagree, but... You might be surprised. I don't disagree with you. Yeah, I, I would even let the opponent pick whatever one. But to, t to lose them all on one failed panic test, especially like with Lannisters and shit... I, I I think it's too much, but so I died. that's another one. That's another one in the unfulfilled wish column. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't really a wish that I had. I Night's Watch is my first army. The I'll always be one of my favorites because also it's my painted army. So I'll always be looking at them and trying to figure out what I could use with my my stuff to make them cool. I would have liked it, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I still think they're halfway decent. Their units are badass. Their cards aren't that great anymore. They have options now. You can do one or the other, yay yeah, yeah or nay, blah, 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 whatever. So now, Sword in the Darkness, when a friendly unit is performing melee attack before rolling attack dice, the defender becomes vulnerable. If the defender has not activated this round, they also become panicked. So Did before... No, they made it better, I think. Uh, so before, it was if you weren't activated, you become panicked and vulnerable. 
Oh, it was both. And now it's one automatically and only one's tied to the activation. Yeah. Yes. So one, you automatically get the vulnerable. I like. Uh, the other one, if it hasn't activated, you get the panic. I, I think it's, uh, that's not a bad change. So it's, it's an improvement. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an extra token because sometimes you are going to want to play that card just to get that vulnerable. Even if they haven't, even if they have activated, it's not a bad card. Um, then they change fire. They change fire for the last little bit in the second, in the first paragraph, when a friendly unit is performing round test. After rolling dice, that unit may re-roll any of the dice for this test. If this targets your commander's unit, they pass this test instead. Well, you're just talking about dropping those cards. Now you're going to automatically pass them on your commander. I like that. There you go. That That's a little bit of a, here's a cookie. Yeah. Don't run too far with it. <laughs> because... <laughs> You don't get much, but I, I think that's good because you you need that you need that auto pass somewhere mm-hmm. because there has to be that one time where you have to pass that paint test. You do not want to lose your cards, yep. no matter what happens. You you got all you've stacked it. All your eggs are in one basket. You're lined up. You're ready to go. You're going down. Oh no! Wait, you failed. All your cards. <laughs> your plans. <laughs> So this gives you a little bit of an out. Mm-hmm. I like it. Uh, Light that brings the dawn uh, adds that you can't be panicked. Um, so when you so attach it, helps it with that insurance. Yeah. Yep. So that helps again with your not failing panics. So maybe they did backhandedly help you with those those cards not falling off with a little bit mm-hmm. of these tweaks. Um, it was just in a different. It came down a different avenue than you had been thinking of. You know? Yeah, I thought it would be. Oh, you just drop, lose one. No, we're gonna bolster your chances of staying with your your cards. Yeah, you can take your library with you. Yay! All right. Well, and now here comes where you make your money. Well, before we go into that, I mean, you said you at least used to play a lot of Night's Watch. Are you satisfied? We know that Night's Watch were on the lower end of the power scale this past patch. I, I, okay, so maybe I'm not the right person to ask, because as of a long time ago, I started playing a lot of, I play everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really tied to a fraction. A faction. Um, No is the short answer. I would have yeah. liked them to do more. I would have mm-hmm. liked them to... Um, I, to me, I hate the split cards. Mm. I, I A lot of times, I don't know which one is better. And sometimes it takes... It's annoying to sit there and be like, well, is it better to do this? Better, blah, 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 blah. Most of the time, it's better probably to take the top. Yeah. Sometimes it's better take, but I don't know. But I don't like the split as much for Night's Watch. I think that it, if it would have just been how they had it before and just toned down the cards so that you get both of them, you play it, you attach it, you get it. But that's my simplistic mind. I don't mind the change. Uh, I think it brings them back in line with everybody else. Uh, I think that with all the changes they did with Corin and John and everybody else, maybe they kicked them a little too hard, but they've been on top for so long. I wasn't really worried about it. I'll play something else. Or I'll just keep playing them and having fun with weird lists that I come up with. Yeah. But I know other people were not happy. Other people thought that they should have gotten more and put them back in line towards the top. I, I'm not. I'm not on that side. I don't think. I, I'm more on the side of fire than ice. What about you? Um, well, I've been notoriously one of the biggest critics of Night's Watch, right? 
Mm -hmm. um, so I was thrilled when they finally got their comeuppance. Um, and so I'm in no rush to see them reassert dominance and be like the number one faction. That said, uh, I think the goal that everyone has wanted, or at least that I've wanted, has been a well-balanced game. And I think season four was a phenomenal patch. Uh, and in terms of what season four was missing, it seemed like it was Bolton's needed some help and Night's Watch needed some help. Bolton's needed more, but Night's Watch needed a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if this is what most people would consider sufficient for that. And I think maybe they could have done a little bit more without going crazy. Um, I mean, it's literally two pages. Yeah. It would be one if they just put Benjen below the three card choices. It would be one page. It would be, f it's literally four cards changed. No units touched, no nothing. Which, again, I'm not complaining. They already, they already kicked everybody. Please don't look at me again. So, Night's Watch, done. All right, Night's turn Watch, your money. Done. <laughs> your money. So, Baratheons. All right, so, when we were listing off wish list items, right, for this patch, I said I wanted three things, really, three commanders, really, for Baratheons. I wanted Andrew Estermont to get a buff. I wanted Devo Seaworth to get a buff. And I wanted Stannis King at the Wall to get a buff. Mm -hmm. um, either through their, like, their attachments or their cards or through the units that they go in for, like, Stannis King at the Wall, for example. That would have been Champions of the Stag. Mm -hmm. um, so here's... here's those were my wishes. Here's what we actually got, right? And Restaurant, um, True Convictions, he had that before. First of the Kingsmen, he had that before, but now it has a second bullet point. Um, provided your opponent does not control crown or letters, his unit can reroll a morale test. Um... And that's it. That's, that's not bad. That is highly, highly, highly situational. Um, letters is a pretty popular spot. I like, mm -hmm. I like the design of it, in that it is similar to the design of Kingsman's Kingsblade and Queensman's. I think their ability is also called Queensblade, mm -hmm. where it's like provided your opponent doesn't have the crown. So I like that it's still in that realm. Um, but it just doesn't really move the needle much. Right? No, it's not... Because it's, 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 it's crown or letters. They don't have to have both. It's either or. Yep. So it's, odds are they are going to have one of those. Um, where I see this helping the most is with... It you know could potentially help you with your like your to the last saves, um, well, that's, which that's a good point. We, <laughs> but you know, and so again, it's like okay, we have we have a sick a sick patient, and luckily the doctor gave a prescription. But is it the right prescription? And I think people are already already irritated with to the last. Mm -hmm. I don't think to the last needed to be reinforced, um, and I don't think as an aggressive commander that that necessarily fits Andrew's repertoire. That's a good point because he does have, he's an aggressive commander. He has yep. assault orders. He has rush of aggression. He has reckless fury. He has those and cards. His, and his old ability King, for third, first of the Kingsmen is still, it feels outdated. It, it feels like it fits for the old Kingsmen that used to draw ours as the Furious. It's like, oh, okay, you get all the benefits from ours is the theory when you use it. Um, he doesn't really add anything. Nope. I don't think so. He, so his attachment isn't that great. His cards, he's got one of the worst cards in the game. Um, which we can pull it up. 
What, Why don't we, through the, through the magic of editing, Stefan will pull up Regulus Fury. And, you know, we talked about talked about Insight and how bad Insight was. Mm -hmm. And, hey, here's Reckless Fury. When a friendly unit is performing a melee attack, they gain Vicious and roll their highest dice. So it's Insight in card, card form, but you suffer two wounds after you do it. Not the enemy, yourself. Yourself, yep. So, shitty card remains <sighs> god-awful. Um, so, yes. But he does, wish, all right, to be, to be fair, to, hold on, to be fair, he does have Assault Orders and Rush of Aggression. Assault Orders is a good card. Rush of Aggression is decent, yeah. Yeah, so he does um, have so, two of the three good cards. So, Wish, buff Andrew. Technically, they buffed him. Am I satisfied? A little bit. No, no, yeah, no. I'm not. No. I, I'd say it missed, missed the mark. At least, at least they threw, they threw it that direction. At least, you got something. Um, but it's they not. Threw it at, they threw it at the dartboard, and instead of hitting yeah. the bullseye, they hit a twenty. They hit the wall the outside. Yeah, <laughs> but the dartboard's hanging on. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't make me want to play Andrew Estermont anymore. Than I did before. He's still going to stay on the shelf. Um, let's go to Davos. Davos. Another, man. another, another wish list item. Davos Commander, right? Yep. Um, he got the change that all the outflank people got, which is ignore usual attachment limits. So unlike Andrew, this change is actually interesting. Yeah. This change, you can do something with your list building. You can be creative here. You can unlock some possibilities that weren't possible before. This is this is interesting. This I could I could take Davos, dust him off. He doesn't just have to be an NCU or an attachment anymore. I could try out Davos Commander again, test some things out, have some fun with it. I, I like it. Is it yeah, I, is it gonna make a top tier? Is it gonna make a top tier commander? Probably not, because <laughs> Through the power of editing, mm -hmm. Stefan's going to bring up the commander ranking Branthians, and we're going to see way at the bottom <laughs> Davos is wallowing away. But at least he got something. He did. And there, like so, you said, so there are up, some interesting combos there. you can do. Yes. That you can um, play around with, that you can, you can have mm -hmm. some fun with. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's that bad. Uh, I thought that they would change a card or two for him because some of his cards are a little weird. But, yeah. Uh, uh, up. A little bit of a thumbs up. Like a half up. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we can even, like, highlight a couple of these. I think his son, Devin Seaworth, you could couple Davos with his son. Devin can get that reckless heroism. So now, not only are you outflanking, you have an auto six charge. Yep. So you can really cause some havoc in the rear. Uh, yeah, there's some fun stuff there. Yep. Um, so, Renly. Well, before one. we get there. Oh, what's that? Looking at that list of Brathian commanders, who's 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 right there underneath Davos? Probably is it, Stormlands. Is it, is it, is it, is it Stannis Paramount. three? No. Stannis oh, three saying, mountain Stannis the very, the, wall, the yeah. very bottom. The other commander I had a wish to be buffed and changed. Did not. Who is literally the worst. Got nothing. Nope. He got so, nothing. He did get Crownland Scouts though. Got Crownland Scouts. It's a cav unit. It is. So he has some variety now instead of shitty shitty cots. Honestly, I was playing around with putting him in because I was talking to Kurt before this about I I've been messing around with Mounted Stannis, trying to figure out something fun to do with him, mm -hmm. and I started a list with putting him in Hedge Knights. Yeah, I mean, I think Hedge Knights is a halfway decent fit for him. They're a halfway decent one. Yeah, and the problem with hedges is now you have four different zones you are trying to control, and you can't control four zones. Yeah, that, that is a problem. Um, the other one was now... 
I don't know. Yeah, and he doesn't really fit in in Flayed Men because they already have Vicious. Yep. And so then you're looking at sources, and now we have Crownland Scouts at least. Yeah. So now, but so you have a little bit of a little bit of variety with your calf now at least. Uh, you could take Cots, you could take the Scouts, you could take the Hedge Knights if you had to, um, mm-hmm. and, and play around with that. So you, you get a little little bit of variety. In, but in terms do, of Go ahead. In terms of um, neutral cap, I think the neutral cap limit hurts Stannis three more than any other commander. In the game. Yeah, good point. Because uh, so much of that cavalry variety is neutral cav. Um, now at least we have crown and scouts, but they didn't come in this patch. No, it was before, but was still before. nice. Um, so then, again, moving on, we go on to Renly. Easy one gets Just charisma the, change. Gets the charisma change. He gets a token. The cards. Um, mm-hmm. His attachment. Yeah. The cards. Regroup and reform. No, no change worth mentioning. Yep. Inexplicable return. Ooh, guess what they added? Did did change? They added draw a card at the bottom. Hey, you know what they should have done? They should have added that to the next one on the list, too. <laughs> all right, so now. Okay. But Here we are. Um, all right, Stefan. Through the magical power of editing, I'm going to need you to put four things on the screen for our lovely viewers. Okay. To bring up expert duelist. Okay. Uh, Gregor. Okay. Tactical approach and great job numbers per circuit tactics. Okay. And so, phew, magic. Um, <laughs> a tactical approach got to change. Um, it used to be three wounds if it was Stannis' unit, and then you roll a d3 if it was any other unit. And you had to remove. You had to take a condition token. And you had to take a condition token off. It had it had to be fueled by a condition token. Um, we've seen elsewhere in the game. Expert duelist does a wound, and there is no cost. I mean, you have to choose that commander, or you have to choose that attachment that has an expert duelist, yada yada. But outside of that, there's no cost to the ability itself. It functions. You can either try to snipe an attachment, or you can deal one wound. But you know what's uh, his attachment anymore. Right. So it's one wound for free. Uh, Gregor, because he is the mountain, two wounds for free. There's no, there's no cost to that. It just has to be a melee attack. Tactical approach uh, was three wounds, but now you had to pay a cost. You had to pay a token. Right? And then, based on numbers, berserk tactics, if you had up to four wounds, but you had a cost. It was three wounds yourself. So, mm-hmm. I think which people is, were, is a fair trade off. I feel like sometimes, yeah, it's, it's a hefty cost. So I think people were justifiably saying three wounds on tactical approach was too much. So you might be surprised. I like this change. I think. But, I think no, making bullshit. it. Don't, I don't think come making in here, it. Come in here, false flag in this shit. I think. Making it two wounds for a token is fair. Okay. What I think is bullshit is making it a token for one wound. Okay. I think it should have been two across the board. Um, we already well, seen. What about this? What about this? Instead of two across the board, just don't spend the token for the one wound. Or that, or they could have gone the Casterly Rock Honor Guard approach. You know. Um, we can even bring that up on screen. Mm-hmm. I find it kind of hypocritical and annoying that they identified this problem with Castle Rock Honor Guard that the token itself has value. And so what you're trading that token in for needs to at least be worth that token. Right? And when mm-hmm. it was trading those tokens for Castle Rock Honor Guard to have abilities and keywords, people were saying, hey, that's not worth it. So now they went the other way, 180 degrees, with tactical approach, and now I'm saying one wound is not worth one token. No. 
because that token has value in and of itself. Mm -hmm. The most common kind you're going to get running Stannis is vulnerable because he has mark target. Um, Countless scouts have mark target. So vulnerables, he can still, you know, he still has tokens of plenty. He is the token guy. Yeah. Um, but though that vulnerable is probably worth more forcing rerolls than it is that wound being used for tactical approach, right? Okay, here's a good question though. How often do you not put tactical approach on Stannis? Um, it, it depends. Uh, it can depend on the board state. Is Stannis' unit already close to dying? Or maybe you want it on your cavalry unit because Stannis is there, you know, he's he's relegated to a foot unit. He can't go in cavalry, so it has, he has to be in an infantry unit. So maybe you want it on your cavalry unit because that's more I mobile. I didn't even think about that that thing can go on a goddamn cavalry unit. Uh huh. All right. So maybe, uh, okay. So that, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty that's pretty fucking good, man. Well, and that was one of the few things that was like, oh, keeping cots alive because they took their attack dice away. It's like, well, at least I can still attack approach my cots. Yeah, uh, I don't think I want to <laughs> well, do that the, anymore. You get that, you kind of get that dice back though now. No, you really don't. <laughs> I'm trying to look at the bright side. Here's the bright side: you can still use it against a giant. To push a wound through against their, you know, two-hit defensive ability. Yep. You can still use it against a shield wall. You can still use it against a unit where a vulnerable token wouldn't be very useful, like a unit that has like two up armor. So like yeah. champions of the stag or uh, iron makers, mm -hmm. who we'll get to in a bit. Um, but if they were going to sap, I guess this is like my bigger point here. If they were going to sap this much power from the card, I would have liked to have seen the, like you said, the cost go away. Where it's like mm -hmm. you don't have to expend the token. Or at least make the trigger easier. Right? So start of a round. Yeah. So like as you said, okay, you can still put it on Stannis. And it still does two wounds. Which we, you and I both have said that's agreeable. That's fair. The second copy is trash. It's literal garbage. Mm -hmm. If you, I mean, if you draw it, you can attach it. Like, you might as well. But let's say you don't draw it at the start of the round. Let's say you draw it from taking the letters. Yeah, Are you going to hold on to that card to the next round and then attach it to your other unit? And then only have two cards for that next round in your hand? No. No, you're going to ditch that card. You're going to pitch it second. And draw. You're just going to take your chance and draw random. Yeah. And hope so, I get final strike or something else. Right. Um, and we, we, we've said commander's cards should be good. They should be impactful. This went from being a great card, maybe even too good of a card, to being discardable trash the second copy of it the second copy for sure yeah the second copy um i don't know it, it, it feels a little out of place i don't think stannis was above and beyond outperforming the other Brathian commanders he's currently you can we can pull the, the rankings right now he's below one true king one true king is the stronger stannis Loris Tyrell is the number one Baratheon commander, and his card Overgrowth is stronger than Tactical Approaches. True. If we're talking about overpowered cards. Mm hmm So, this feels random, and it feels poorly done. Piss poor job. Yeah. I, I, that's all. I, that's, I, that's I, like, the, I like the 2+. plus. Like I think you yeah, made a I great think that's, point. I think that's fine. I think you made a great point with the cost of the token using that token for a plus one wound when greg gets two wounds for free when vargo when he spends a token he gets to at least pick the damn attachment yeah he, he's snipe an attachment with that token that's worth it mm -hmm. that that's definitely worth it um the one wound and the token not worth it not worth it no but you did a, get, car, a card should do something. 
Yes. It, it, it should it should add something. Every time and, you draw it. And it feels like the second copy is not adding. No. It's it's a ditch. And you can't even use it to and you, cycle. <laughs> At the very least, you could have put that start a friendly turn, discard yeah. and draw. You yeah, know? Let, let me cycle it at least. If you're gonna, if you're gonna it. kick it in its balls. Yeah. Let me, let me recycle it. Yeah. So they did Baratheons did get a unit change and <laughs> they they it was the Riders of Highgard. Riders got the Lance change. They have a special Lance now. But now they have their special Lance, which they get a plus one to hit when they charge. So now they are a six point Lance Cav mm -hmm. that hits on threes when they charge with Sundering, rolling nine dice. Nine instead of ten. Nine instead of ten. But still. So, uh, six of all our points. All our viewers here, I'm, I'm sure, especially after my tactical approach, ran, are saying, you know, Belisarius, he's so biased for Baratheons. Um, I'll say it. This seems OP to me. <laughs> I, I, I. This seems too good for six points. Six points? I mean, they are five plus, six plus. Yeah, but... they're, they're squishy. They've always been squishy. I don't think they were. I don't think they were necessarily having a big problem. Um, the problem with them has always been someone throwing a weakened token on them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that four up to hit was difficult. I like that this change is like fixed to the charge, so it's not mm -hmm. all the time three up. It's only on the charge it's three up. Um, so you, you definitely don't want to leave them stuck in. You want to pull them out and cycle them. Um, but I think speed six, nine dice, sundering on threes. I think that That's might be good. a tad too good for six points. Okay, so hear me out here. Mm -hmm. If all lands cav yeah. went to this, mm -hmm. where it was plus one to hit, they all had a, f a four plus, and then plus one to hit when they charge, would you... I? I feel like you could almost take a point away from those eight point lance calves. Yeah, maybe. Instead of being eight point Starfall Knights, eight point Knights of Castle Rock. Well, maybe Knights of Castle Rock are different because they got Lannister Supremacy. But if you, if the fix to Lance not only was losing the attack dice, but now. We give everybody an extra point that wants to play him, but you only hit on fours when you're stuck in. That makes sense. <clears throat> I feel like that would be a good change for them. Making them a six-point heat-seeking missile, basically. That's, that's basically what you made it. It was mm -hmm. a six-point heat-seeking missile. Like, hit it with a couple times with uh, some... Oh, wait, you don't have... That's Renly's side. You don't have any range for Renly, do you? They have to go neutral. Yeah. Uh, so you have to go Golden Company or Charger. Yeah. That's still fine. Shit. You hit, shoot him with Golden Company crossbows and then charge mm -hmm. him with that? That unit's done. Yeah. That unit's done. Or run that, two. Yeah. Run, run two and run uh, Courtney Penrose Commander with issue commands to give a free charge. Shit. Yep. Yeah. That, there you I go. think that, that that's pretty good. That's I mean, again, I, I already ran two of these last Adepticon with Courtney Penrose. Like <laughs> I was all, they were already good. Now now they're just gonna hit like a ton of bricks. Mm -hmm. So it's like I, I, I like the change. Yeah, I'll take it. I, I do think it's a little bit unfair. I think this patch in general. I think six point cav are a little bit overtuned. I think eight point cav are a little sad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I, I I tend to agree. And eight points in this game is a lot. It is. That's almost a quarter of your list. That's a lot. I mean, and and these lands cav, yes, they're good. But man, again, if they hit on fours when they get stuck in, 
I feel like they're they wouldn't be worth the eight, and taking them down to seven would open up a lot of attachments yeah. that you could put other where, other places in different armies. I, I don't know. There, I think like, there's a lot of different ways you can go with that. Like I said, I like the design of it that it yeah. incentivizes you to use your lance to charge, not to just sit there. Yep. The cab that should just be sitting there are champions of the stag and flame. Lance Cavs should be charge focused. So it's a good change in that regard. Just a little bit too much for six points in that opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. I think someone hit the peace pipe a little too hard when they saw that one. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. But and also, to be clear, if you read it, some people say, Oh, they get plus two to hit if they have two ranks. No. I'm sure there was supposed to <laughs> I know, be a I know, I know, I know the in there. I know the rules lawyer is like, oh, they didn't put a comma, so therefore, no, come on. Yeah, come on. It, it, there, yeah. If anybody forgot a comma, it's Simon. They forget commas. As the, as the TO at my local place, like, we're not going to play these fucking games. Like, you know what? <laughs> you know what's up. We're not going to spend hours pouring over the fucking wording and fucking rules, rules lawyering this shit. Like, yeah, especially in this game, because the wording is all over the place. You, you just got you, you got to play like you meant it. Um, all right, so Baratheons, let's let's give a thumbs up, thumbs down here. What your overall take? I know you probably don't like a lot of it. I'm I'm kind of neutral. I, I, I'll go sideways. sideways? You know, I like I like the idea behind the lance change. I like that. Uh, inexplicable return got it can be discarded. I like that Davos. I like Davos's change. I like that Andrew got something. So basically, you like about half of it. I hate the tactical approach. Well, I, and again, even tactical approach, I'm, I'm torn on because I like mm-hmm. part of it, but I hate the other part. Yeah, and I agree. It, it's too much. Um, I think they. It was very fifty-fifty for Baratheons. Um, yeah, I think they didn't get very many changes, and whatever they did get was very either small buffs or mm-hmm. not, or a nerf or straight up kicking the balls. Like I like I said with my wish list, right? It's like they did do something for Andrew. They did do something for Davos. The stuff for Davos, I think, is cool. The stuff for mm-hmm. Andrew, I think, was insufficient. And then the stuff for Stannis three is non-existent. So, if they would have given Andrew Furious Charge, would that have? Yeah, that would have been cool. I Why mean, not? that's an aggressive commander trait. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Victorian has it right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gregor has cannot be weakened. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, if, know if that old man can't be weakened. Right. Yeah, I'm not saying it has to be like that strong. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying these are like things they could have done. Like, uh, you know. I mean, it does have a big giant hammer. They can come up with something. To mm-hmm. give, like, what's the... They could have given him the freaking Warden's Warhammer ability. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would have been cool. And kind of thematic. Yeah. Alright, so there's our Baratheon take. Um... Next champs of the stag still suck. Champ, and they didn't do nothing with champs. And nothing I mean, with you, champs. Nothing with champs. Um, that'll be bigger when we get to the Iron Makers. So. Yeah. Uh, sad smiley or sad face tear for them. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad. But um, so we move on. Um, we move on. All right. So now, if you haven't noticed, I turned my hat the other way now. Now it's time to get down to business. It's Targaryen Serious time, baby. Stephen. It's Targaryen time. My second, well, probably my first favorite faction, my second faction I bought, Targaryens. Uh, I love dragons ever since I was a kid. Love painting dragons. So I was naturally drawn to them. We'll go through their changes. First one, easy one, motivated by coin, Dario. He's been... Changed everybody else's friendly instead of make attack. Yay. Woo. Okay. Big one. So, lot of Mother of Dragons changes. 
Everybody's going to love this, I'm sure. So, Mother Dragon's commander changed. Uh, she got Threaten. Awesome. Who doesn't love a Threaten? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's sweet. Um, and she also gets to go get one of her commander cards whenever the hell she wants. Sweet. Good job, once per game. So, Fire and Made Flesh, three times. No, you only get to do it once. Oh, yeah, true. Three times. Fire and Made Flesh, three times. New Fire and Made Flesh, which is lovely, by the way. All right, so starting off with Barry, Legendary Boldness. So, one of the things I feel like now is perfect time. One of the things they got around and got rid of was... No more free victory points. No more free victory points on cards. No more free victory point NCUs. I'm looking at you, Doran, here in a little bit. Um, no more free shit. Except for Eldon Estermont. Does he have a free victory point card? Valuable captive, right? Oh, they missed one. They missed one. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, let me let me let me double check on that. <laughs> Check. If they missed one, I'm going to be not very happy. We might have done him a previous time around. Because I am sick of the free... It was so hard to keep track of when the cards were attached. Yep. yep. He still has Hefty Ransom. God damn it. <laughs> um, <sighs> I think I think uh, Jamie Attachment also, right? Valuable Captive. Valuable Captive has it. And Rickon. Yeah. Rickon Stark's the other one. Oh, well, that's different. Rickon's different. And right. well, the, All right, so one victory point for killing those dudes mm -hmm. is different than, okay, I'm attaching this card. If I don't kill you by the end of the round, I get a victory point. If you kill me next round under the starlight of the new moon, <laughs> then you get a victory point. I Like, how about you make it a little easier? <laughs> like I, I don't know. I like I liked I liked it. I like getting rid of the no victory the free victory points. Except yep. for your magic Baratheon come out on top again. Hefty <laughs> ransom, Elden Estermont. He he escapes <laughs> the, the, he escapes the chopping block. Baratheon players don't even like that card, by the way. That's like their least favorite card from them. So Nobody like, liked those cards. You missed you missed a spot, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so now they, they changed it. Uh, it is no longer Legendary Boldness. Oh, wait, I, I moved off of my stuff. Legendary Boldness, uh, no longer Victory Points for whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, it's changed. Now it is, after a friendly unit within long range of Barristan rolls defensive dice, that unit blocks two hits and automatically passes their panic test from this attack. That's a good card. Underneath, draw one tactics card. That's that's awesome, dude. Uh, that's a good card. That's that's an awesome card. I don't know, like automatically passing that panic test. I think that right there is worth it. To block that two can, hits, you can clutch one out and feast for crows. Like, <laughs> like that's awesome. After a friendly unit with the in, it's not even that unit. It's someone within. Uh, in long range, right? Like that's that's perfect. That that's a good card. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, and if you don't like it, you can still draw another card. <laughs> yeah, you cycle it. Imagine that. You hot cycle take, it. Hot hot take. Every commander card should have that. I was honestly, I was just gonna say that. I was literally waiting for you to finish your sentence. I was gonna say. Every commander card, not even every commander card, every commander card that has something to do with the commander being part of that card and what's going to happen needs to be a cycle card. Like, because if your commander dies... I think that, most of them are. Like, I think all Jamie's are. I think, like... I think no. most of those were, like, they require the commander. I think most of those already are. But I'm, I'm saying, like, so. fuck it. Every card in the game, that's a commander card. Go through your deck. They're gonna be able to cycle them, yeah. Go through your deck and hey, let me rounds. let me get rid of my shitty second tactical approach. <laughs> uh, so legendary boldness. Bing, good job. Uh, count the cuts. Okay. 
Count the Cuts was a horrible card. It made me not want to play Belwas. Like, it, it was just bad. It, like, you dealt you wounds, or, or you, you couldn't heal. You weren't allowed to heal the, the unit that you put it on. Mm, yeah, it had a big like, drawback. Yeah, it was it was dumb. Like now you get rerolls and plus one morale. So like, yeah. that's great for infantry in this. That that's an awesome. And if it's Bell Wass's unit, you get that plus one morale. Mm-hmm. That I thought you throw that was throw sweet. them in um throw them in Unsullied Pikeman. Mm-hmm. They'll take that on any day of the week. And it's so the trigger is after the enemy completes a melee attack, you target the defender, attach this card to them until they destroy an enemy. Awesome. That's a sweet. That's a sweet way to get rid of a card. Mm-hmm. Easy, right there. Reroll the tag, highest tag dice value. Reroll the tag dice. Boom, bingo. I like it. Good change. Count the cuts. I, I probably still won't play a bell loss though. <laughs> His other cards aren't that great. So Belwas kind of dies in the vacuum of all the great commanders that you kind of want to play in the target list. I don't even know what his other cards are. I'm looking at him right now. Hold on. Pathetic Attempt is the new Pathetic Attempt. Expert Parry. Eh. Good Dying is the weird one. When a friendly unit, a friendly cavalry infantry unit is destroyed before being removed, that unit performs melee attack. Eh. Okay, it's like last strike or final strike, whatever it is. But still don't want to play him. Sorry. Cool card. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. It's all right. Better than the yeah, victory point. In- infantry want rerolls, and they're not going to get rerolls unless they charge, and they're not going to charge that often. So, yeah. All right. So, what's one thing you haven't seen? on the table in a very long time that you hate a lot. Mother of Dragons. Dragons. Uh, I mean, I saw the Nationals. Yeah, but, alright, so Banesh's match list is very good. Mm -hmm. Um, You don't see Mother of Dragons. No, you don't see her commander. No. Because when they changed Fire Made Flesh, um, it, it basically killed that commander. So they and and Dracaris was weird. So we'll go from that. So we'll start there. Dracaris, they changed the card for Mother of Dragons. Uh, they changed from short range to long range, being within uh, Drogon, Regal, or any of the dragons within long range of Danny's unit when Danny activates. Can Instead, yeah. attack. It's like issue commands, but without a charge. Yeah, badass. It's a good cool. cool card. Now it's now it's long range, short range, garbage. It was so mm-hmm. hard to get them in short range and use that card. Or if you don't want to use it, guess what? You can cycle that card right now. You can on out. cycle it. <laughs> uh, the next card, the awesome change from short range. Awesome change needed to happen. I always, when I played it, you wanted it to be long. Uh, Promise of Fire, uh, no more victory point baloney. Uh, when an enemy NCU activates, that NCU, if that NCU claims a zone, uh, attach this card, attach this card to one enemy combat unit until the end of the game. They suffer one panic test while attached. Each time a dragon performs an attack against the unit, this unit suffers three wounds instead of D3. That's it's good. pretty fucking good, it's, dude. It gives you consistency instead of the wild variability of a D3. Oh, who would like that? Oh, yeah. Tech approach. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> um, it's It's different. It is different because it's an NCU. This activity. is this is just this is just making your your base attack consistent. And honestly, are you going to are you going to claim that zone if I play that, and you're engaged with a dragon? You um, yeah, it all depends probably? on circumstance, right? It's, yeah. it's all circumstantial. Depends on the board state. 
the panic test is kind of weird, I think. Yeah, so it's like it's it's weird. It's like there's like an, a control element, a panic element, and then like an attack boost element, um, all wrapped up into one card. Um, Way better than the weird victory point one they did before. Yeah, it's like it's got a lot of stuff. Um, it's got a lot of stuff. <laughs> I, I I liken it to uh, uh, Baratheon conviction, where mm -hmm. it's like. Here's a whole bunch of stuff. Does it go together? Nah. Not really. So <laughs> but, do you uh, have to but do it's it a in lot. a certain order? Or who picks that order? When an enemy is you, actually, it's if they claim it, attach it. They suffer one panic test. So I think it's all dependent on that if. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, it's a, it's a cascading. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So it would be after then the panic test. Yeah, and then the rest good. permeates through the rest of the game. Yeah. yeah. Damn, that's so good. And you can't get rid of it. Oh. Good. Badass change. Hey, Targ. Good, good card. It's almost like they've been watching the House of the Dragon. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, Targ's half. Dragons need to be good again. Remember? Make dragons great again. Story time, boys and girls. Uh,. This show was originally supposed to be not just Song of Ice Fire the Miniatures game. It was also supposed to talk about House of the Dragons each week. Uh, that just tells you how delayed we were about <laughs> launching this show. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, so in the it, future, in the future, yeah, we'll talk House of the Dragons if we're still yes, going. The, yeah. So in the future too. So the whole plan here is that we're going to do. Uh, some segments that each of us are going to kind of kind of run mm -hmm. our own segments and kind of plan their segments and, and do some funny stuff on the side. Uh, we'll do some. Yeah, we're not we're not just going to be like an update channel. Nah, or, nah. Or, or, we're we're yeah. trying. We'll do some list reviews too. I thought mm -hmm. about like we'll talk whoever, list building. We'll talk. Yep. And, yeah. and I think I think that'll be really cool once once we get through this patch. And I don't know if it will do it weekly or bi-weekly. It depends on everybody's schedule. But I think that it'll be fun to do and fun to see what we get from people in their different list submissions yeah. and stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, talk media. We'll invite people on. Mm -hmm. We have a lot we want to do with this show that's beyond yeah. just updates. Yeah, and news. Yeah, because everyone already does that. Yeah, we're going to have some fun. And I want to do some graphic work and play with some fun stuff. But yeah. we, we, again, a little bit of a commercial break in there. Um, yeah. So back to tar cards. Uh, we are at Fire Made Flesh. Um, mm -hmm. So the only thing that changed here is, do you know? I have no idea. Is, is it the timing? Guess what card we get back into our deck as Mother of Dragons. So you're losing field control. We're gaining something that used to be pulled. Oh, what could it be? Could we say overrun? Oh, dragons. So that's good for dragons. That's shitty for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is a hidden, hidden, hidden buff to Mother of Dragons. Yeah, for sure. Because overrun with a bunch of dragons is a pain in the ass. I want to I want to say something here mm -hmm. um, about overrun. Overrun is a exceptionally powerful card. It is also a highly situational card. The more hoops you have to jump through, the more situational something is. The more you know, in, in balance theory, the more powerful that thing is allowed to be. If something is really easy to do, if it's really convenient, if it doesn't really have many restrictions, if the timing is, is really easy, then that thing should typically be weaker. Mm -hmm. So overrun is a great example of something that's really powerful, but harder to pull off, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's relevant in the... Um, in the grand scheme of balancing and 
Crownland Scouts. I was going to talk about that, but yeah. <laughs> I think that putting Overrun back in, I don't know why you would have taken Overrun out just to, to stop the steamroll, I guess. I think so, yeah. Um, I think that's all it is. It's a win more card. Mm-hmm. It, it's a steamroll. You've already deleted a unit. You're probably facing the flank of another unit with a dragon. Like you, yeah, you've got the speed to get to a flank. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you probably initially charged the flank of one unit, eliminated it. Now you're charging the flank of another unit. That's that's a win more because you're you're getting engaged. You're, it's it's a steamrolling effect. Um, I. Not to say I don't like it. I think field control is a horrible card. And the more <laughs> I can get it out of that goddamn deck, the better. Because <laughs> every time I get it, I just ditch it or I use it as quick as I can. And it never does anything. Like, I don't really give a shit about a three-inch shift. Get out of here. Like, I got Quaith. I got all Cav. Does anybody really give a shit about three inch shift in the target? Brathians do. Brathians care about a three inch shift. Crown scouts are all the rage. Dude, I will give you field control all day. You can even put it on letters. You can call it library control. You can call it. You can be the librarian. You can put tax everybody that goes in and out. I don't care. All I'm saying is, in this deck, it is garbage. Nobody wants it. And if you want it, I don't know why. I'm sorry. I ditch it every time. But Overrun, bing, another good card. We give Mother of Dragons. Mother of Dragons definitely got a look over. They wanted dragons. They wanted fire on the battlefield. Next up, Sudden Retreat. Sudden Retreat. What did they even change with Sudden Retreat? Oh, Commander. You can re-roll it if it's your commander's unit. All right. So when you retreat, you re-roll the dice if it's your commander's unit. Yeah. Center retreat was a situational okay card. Maybe a top of the round if someone hits you, you want to get the hell out of there. In your cav unit, you can get to someone's flank and piss them off. That's a good use of it. Re-rolling it, sweet. Re-roll Blood Riders running away. Uh, next one. Retribution of the Dragon. No more victory point. Yay. But they did change a lot. After the friendly unit is attacked, target the attacker. Attach this card to them until the end of the game. Do not get rid of it. While attached, each time this unit is attacked, the attacker gains Vicious. Each time this unit is attacked, if the attacker is Grey Worm or an Unsullied unit, this unit also becomes vulnerable. Mm -hmm. That's pretty damn good. It's almost like a Lannister card where it's like they have minus two morale for the rest of the game or whatever until yep. they take letters or whatever. It's like that Tywin card, but you can't get rid of it. Nope. And I like that it has the faction kicker. They have that little unsullied unit now. They have the unsullied as oh, its own. An unsullied unit, yep. Mm -hmm. I like the little kicker. I like putting that flavor in there. Now, instead of just getting instead vicious. Instead of just Dothraki, we might start to see some unsullied on the table. I already started building an all unsullied force with Quake. Yeah. Uh, because you, you, again, infantry units notorious for I can't do this, I can't look over there while someone's. <laughs> so you need yeah. something to turn them around somehow. Mm -hmm. And field control ain't fucking doing it. <laughs> it's not like you could pivot off field control or anything. That would be sweet. If you could pivot off of that yeah. and do a, a three inch maneuver i might 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 do that yeah but and that would be a boost to the base deck which everyone loves to complain about the base deck uh, and their base deck is garbage um all right so good change love it love gray worm gray worm sweet i love issue commands 
Grey Worm. Grey Worm with dragons is awesome. Again, dragons, more dragons. Uh, betrayal for Jora. Change that. When a friendly NCU claims a zone, replace that zone's effect with draw two tactics cards. Restore three wounds to Jora's unit. One enemy combat unit becomes vulnerable and weakened. Then attach this card to Jora's unit until they destroy that one enemy. So it can be removed. I was wrong. I was looking at something else. Um, well, and any enemy combat unit. Yeah, any enemy combat unit. Uh, while attached, each time that unit activates, they suffer one wound and become panicked. They can remove it, at least. That's a pain in the ass. It's cool. It gives you everything. It's, it's, a, light, it's a lot up front for a draining effect. Mm-hmm. But you can get rid of it. Yep. And that, that would be good at the end of a round, and you're the last one, and you got a top of the round, and you can throw on swords and finish a unit off and pull that bitch right off. Mm-hmm. Then you don't even have to worry about it, because you haven't even activated when you use swords. You just pull it right off. No unit. No wound. Cool card. Good change. Good job. Targs. Ooh, getting the buff. They're, we're still going. And yeah, we're not even done. I, I really feel like they started watching House of the Dragons and we're like, oh yeah, shit. We forgot. We have we have a, a whole army that relies on dragons that we forgot about. <laughs> that we haven't looked at their deck in ten damn years. So the last three cards. <clears throat> last three cards. Some good changes. All three. Uh, one to Carl Drogo. Everybody loves them some Carl. Carl. I like saying Carl. I know you're going to yell at me. But I like calling him Carl. When Carl Drogo activates, target one enemy in long range and attach this card to them until the end of the round. While attached... Melee attacks on this enemy gain. Critical blow. Crit critical blow. <laughs> <clears throat> For the round. That's pretty damn good. I like it. Feels like old Audrevat was just discard draw mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, I didn't I didn't want it. Do you Old like Adrivet. this new Adravat? I love the new Adravat, and guess what? If I don't like it, guess what I can do with it? You can discard it and draw. Get it the hell out of my deck and draw a new tactics card. I, I like the flexibility, again, on a commander card of getting it, cycling it. I, I think it's a good idea. Um, Carl, and it's, it's when Carl Drogo activates, too, so you have to do it. Because you lose out on that whole first part if you can't, if you draw that and Carl's dead. Nobody likes killing Carl. Unless you're someone else besides the target player. Anyway, so Adravat, badass, good job. Love it. War Cry for Marceline. It's the same change that the other War Cry's got. Except now they're on to Unsullied. So now, oh, any, also unsullied. Yeah. Yep, Marceline's unit and an unsullied unit you can use to target them off of. Yeah. That's pretty That's good. That's cool. Yeah, I like, again, the flavor. Yep. And the last of the card changes, um, the Queen's Law. <laughs> uh, Shaz, do you want to say it or do you want me to murder it? Skahazmo Kendak. The shave paint. There we go. The shave paint. I never even knew that. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right, so they changed him. Uh, triggers better. Uh, uh, not when an enemy attacks. No VP baloney. Uh, it's way cooler. It's when an enemy combat unit activates. 
easy trigger. Get it out of your hand anytime someone activates. Attach this card to the enemy until the end of the round. While attached, during your opponent's turns, this unit loses all of its abilities and can't be targeted by friendly tactics cards. Now, here's, here's my favorite part. And you know it's got a little bit of flavor on it. Or a Brazen Beast unit. Yep. If Shaz, Shakaz, or Shakaz, whatever you Skaz, Skaz, Skaz unit, or Brazen Beast unit, performs a charge action against this unit, they automatically count as rolling a six on all charge dice. Well, that helps Brazen Beast out. That helps a lot of stuff out. That's I like I like the flavor. I do too. I like the flavor. And I never see Brazen Beasts on the table. So, you know, any I'm not gonna say this is gonna completely change the game and people are gonna sell their Dothraki armies and we're gonna see Brazen Beast armies. But anything moving in that direction is, you know, at this point is a positive. Uh, and uh, not even that, again, I'm talking about the flavor. Mm -hmm. it, it gives each of these different commanders some flavor as to what units they think you should probably run with them or that they were in the books with mm -hmm. like the Unsullied or Skahaz and his Brazen <laughs> Beasts I got it I got it you got it uh, so uh, I think I think it's an awesome change awesome change out of the ballpark Targs, batten, batten a thousand. I mean, seriously. Well, huh, let's not get ahead of ourselves because next up is a grand fucking slam. <laughs> I I don't understand it. So next up is Jora. Um, Jora got that. He got that cold hands treatment. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't understand. Like, all right. So <laughs> he's not. He's. On, on paper, without looking at any of his extra bullshit, he's not mm -hmm. good. Yeah, he doesn't hit hard. He's nope. squishy. Squishy. Doesn't you know, hit he hard. Is, he's always been a nice support piece with that scout openings. Mm -hmm. And now... Now... But you didn't, now you don't need scout openings. Because outriders have precision if they don't move. Well, it gives them precision if they do move. Mm -hmm. Or gives... Your vets precision. Or your vets. Yep. On two of But attacks. now he has all that. And he has bookkeeping. <laughs> He's carrying it around the library. He's got a library in his bag. His rucksack. Full of books. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. I, I like it. It makes Thank him a you. premier support piece. Well, so for four points, so they moved him up to four points last time. Mm -hmm. Basically killed him. Yeah. Because you're not going to take him over a, over an NCU. Never. You're never going to take him over an NCU. And if now you, you are. Do, now, now I will. I, now I have an idea of, now I can, I have a bunch of new cards that are uh -huh. pretty cool. Now guess what? Four points. I could squeeze some stuff around and maneuver if I needed to to squeeze oh, yeah. him in. Oh. He's better than a uh, Dragonstone Noble is. Yeah, he's Before. squishy. If you hit, squishy. if you shoot him, if you shoot him, he probably dies. His order is a good order, and his order is bookkeeping good. on top of it. So, and bookkeeping is good. Do you think yep. bookkeeping is or the the giving him the plus one? Hand size, giving them four cards. I think that's so one of the best. I think that's one of the best abilities in the game. I was just gonna um, say. I thought that as was... long as cards are still good and are not pointless, it's one of the best abilities in the game. Which most targs were. Most targ cards were. Mm -hmm. you, you really just get rid of them. Which honestly, then having four cards in your hand is way better. It helps so. you it helps just... you cycle through them. <laughs> yeah, get rid of all the crap ones. So, I mean, it, it does does make me think about maybe trying to go down to a two NCU list and maybe having some big heavy hitters and Jora there to back them up. Yeah, might be fun. I'd, 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 
if I played Targs, I would try to work him into my lists. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. So if, if you're not using his commander, because yes. I, I, I think his commander is actually really good. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on a losing streak against Targs locally, and a lot of it's because of Jork. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> who's better I, now? <laughs> so side note, side note on top of this, a little bit of a tiny commercial here. Uh, this won't be out in time to do it anyway, but we're we're having our starter box tournament that I stole idea from you. Oh, I'm yeah. giving you credit. So we're having our starter box tournament this weekend, nice. and the Targ starter box is it's one of the far. best ones. Yeah, one of the best ones. It's all Cav. Mm -hmm. It's all Cav, and both your commanders. You have Jorah in there now with four points that can give you plus one hand size. You have Jorah in there now. And you if you don't take him as your commander, you can put him in there. And Drogo's your other commander. The only downside is that you have two NCUs. Woo! Which is a problem a lot of factions have in those starter box tournaments. So. Yeah. So lots of people are going to have two NCUs. Or they're going to pay the price and get a hero's box. A hero box, yeah. yeah. But I don't know... I don't know if I'm going to take Targs. I think me taking Targs is probably a bad idea. Because I will just run away from people and just do circle the wagons and shoot them with Outriders. So uh, our next unit is Unsullied Pikemen. Uh, they got a change. Only real change is now Unsullied. Combat Get Mastery. Defense. Defense. While your opponent does not control swords, enemies engaged with this unit suffer minus one hit. So that's borrowing kind of from that Kingsmen, Queensmen design space. And I like that they're, um, you know, trying that in other areas and other factions. I think yep. that's, um, you know, relatively untapped design area, and I'm glad to see it spreading. Um, and that's a cool ability, you know? Yep. I like, I even like the name and them classifying it uh -huh. as combat mastery form. Because yeah. Above all else, those dudes, they got their wieners lopped off and they were trained to, <laughs> trained to kick ass since they were tiny little boys. They better have some combat mastery. They ain't got no wieners. <laughs> they got so, They got to do something. They kick ass, they sure do. They master combat. Uh, Unsullied Sword Masters. Now, again. Combat Mastery. Resolve. Resolve. Again, I like that they're, they're, they're changing it up and giving each one their own little bit of flavor and a mm -hmm. little bit of identity. Beautiful. And it is, it is something new for the game. Like, yeah, it's like, oh, well, that's just Dauntless. Well, it's, it's situational Dauntless. It's a new name. It's something new, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I I, I'm glad to see that rather than just Dauntless copy-pasted. Exactly. And I think that it, it, it sh shows some progress towards what they're thinking about. And I like that they're adding that flavor to, to the, the, these units. It, 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 it's making the faction better because it's making me want to play unsullied now mm -hmm. I, yeah I wanted... so so taking these two unsullied changes into account along with the commander card changes you think you'll throw an unsullied army down on the table oh of course yeah yeah 100 percent. not so mission not, accomplished here yeah like they at least not to even just to try and and see how it feels the look of it on the tabletop, I think will be the more draw to it. I feel like I want unsullied, mostly unsullied, and one dragon with Grey Worm. There you and go. Have Pikeman, Pikeman with the dragon, like dragon. Hey, poke it in its ass and move it along. <laughs> feel like hey, do, 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 do. and get that dragon to, to attack. I think that's cool. I think the issue commands with the dragon is cool. Um, I think that Targs made out like bandits. Um, I think they're definitely winners 
of this patch, mm -hmm. um, along with another faction. Mm -hmm. I, I, I totally agree. Uh, I want to play Targs more. Uh, I want to I want to paint Targs more now, honestly. And you know how bad that you know how bad it has to be if I want to paint. <laughs> like, if I want to paint shit, it's it's got to be good. And it's got to be fun and flavorful and cool looking. Um, I, I home run, good job. Whoever's doing targs, you need to go on to the next faction and the next faction and the next faction because <laughs> you did a good job. And and not to say there weren't nerfs, which we'll talk about right now, that you weren't happy about, that you, oh, sure. you think they should have gotten. Um. But I think that they should have probably did something along those lines. Um, but what, what do you think? What, what do you do think? And then we'll talk about that. Well, I think I think targets are definitely big winners of this match, right? All these mm -hmm. changes have been positive changes. Um, a lot of them very good changes. Um, I think they were already a strong faction. And we'll talk more about this later. Um, I, I continue to see the... Uh, I think six point cavalry are doing too much right now, um, especially when you compare them to what's happening with eight point cavalry across You're the talking board. About screamers. I'm talking about screamers. I think screamers not, are overtuned. Not outriders. Not outriders. I'm talking about screamers. I think screamers are overtuned for six points, and I know Targ players were crying for sundering. Um, for if we're something. Talking... For something for those poor guys because they look awesome. And they didn't do shit last time. Well, they had, and granted, this is old. I'm 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 comparing this to old Riders of High Garden. Mm -hmm. Screamers had comparable damage to Riders of High Garden. They were the they were the same. Mm -hmm. Now, then they got better when they got that Sundering, and they were, uh, in my opinion, you can disagree, too good for six points. And now they're making Riders Just of High Garden sundering? also too good. Huh? Not with the Furious Charge, just with Sundering? They, they had Furious Charge before. Oh, they, they did? They had the Vulnerable, yeah. yeah. They gained the Sundering. And I think that put them over the over the top. They're probably with their, a, with, a, I mean, a 6.7 point unit. 6, I, 6. I, 6. I, 7. I, I, I've, I've put this in the discords, and I, you know, admittedly, tongue-in-cheek, but, you know, with a grain of truth in there, like, Compare, let's put it up on the screen. Magic of editing. Ooh. Champions of the Stag, eight points. And Screamers, six points. You have better speed, Screamers. Better morale, Screamers. Better attack profile, Screamers. They both give out a token. The only thing Champions of the Stag have is armor. And they cost two points more. They both have a keyword. They both give out a token. All right. The, mm. And I think Sundering is better than Crit Blow. Yes, while you're stuck in. Mm -hmm. But the spike potential with the... Because they give out a vulnerable or a weekend? Which one? <laughs> uh, the Cots. Cots, it depends. If it's a charge, it's the weekend. If it's stuck in, it's vulnerable. Okay. So yes, they do have more consistency with their token. Yes, that that's what I was just gonna say. Is that I feel like the tokens having both either or tokens mm -hmm. on either offensive or defensive is worth a point at least by itself. Do you think the token consistency with the armor? is worth two points considering all those other categories where screamers are better. Speed, morale, attack dice. They're squishy. Yeah, they're squishy. They're you squishy. have Swift Retreat in your base deck. Yes. Swift Retreat is badass now. You have Miri. That's another good point, is Miri. A lot a lot of a lot of people complain about the changes to Illyrio. But a lot of Illyrio's power was replaced in these other NCUs. Yeah. You have, I'm sorry. Um, Quaith 
is probably Quaith. Quaith, you don't even take any damage because you just bypass the attack altogether and yeah, the opponent I... wastes their activation. I don't know how that NCU has gotten this far. Sorrow's on Doxos. He can get additional tokens throughout the game by taking bags, and he can reduce the enemy's attack profile by one rank. I don't care about that. You know what I care about? All my Cav hitting with max attack dice. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit about your attack dice. I want my attack dice to be... Well, you mentioned squishiness. So Yes, yeah, true. Good point. But that's I, I think Tars are sitting on a very good spot right now. I oh, think yeah. if we're if we're talking nationals and we're putting bets down, they're my US pick to win US Nats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it also depends who plays them, of course. It depends yes, but, of course. The pilot always matters. Yeah. Um, but, but I think the, I think if Banesh goes to US Nats this year. Uh, <laughs> it, I mean it, I I've I've, I've played him. Thought. I've played him. He kicked my ass. Do you, uh, the good question there is, is the Mother of Dragons change good enough to make competitive players use them? They might make it one of their lists. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a target player. so it, It's a hard choice because now Jorah with Betrayal is good. Mm -hmm. Now Drogo... Jorah Jor was Adderhead. already good. It was mm -hmm. already good. And you just People were overlooking it. Yeah, I... Winners. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. Let's move so, on. Because you we'll can't see. sing enough praise to those poor bastards. Now, let's get sad for a minute. Everybody, put on your frowny face. Remember going... the start of this episode. If you were here and you've been watching this whole time, what did we say? Wish list item number one. Mm -hmm. Balon NCU. Yep. Here we go. Yuck. So, free units suck for the game. I'm sorry. Free units suck. Um, bringing units back in people's flanks in a rank and flank game unactivated is, is pretty rough. <laughs> even even with all the cav in the game. I want to add uh, something else to that mm -hmm. also. The tiebreaker in this game being based on units on the board as Good opposed point. to units destroyed. Mm -hmm. If your units can respawn, it's more, that's more points on the board. Mm -hmm. And you can even bring them on. You don't got to even engage them. If it's at a certain point in the battle, you can sit them off to the side. Look, I got more points on the board. Boo. So they did change him, though. They changed him. They nerfed him. They, nerfed they did... Him. What we were asking for. With the biggest, most padded fucking nerf bat they could find. <laughs> it, I mean, it was like the dude was in one of those plastic bubbles, and I still had the biggest nerf bat that was like 15 inches wide, and it had a rubber hose in the middle. So there was no chance in hell that anybody would get hurt by it. That's what they hit him with. Yeah. So um, when you re redeploy the unit that died, that you killed, that you spent all your hard-earned cards and resources on, Balon says, no, 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 not so fast. I come back out on short range of any flank, just without my pillage tokens this time. <laughs> It'll be Anybody unactivated else? if they died unactivated. Mm -hmm. It'll be activated if they were activated. Attachments. Doesn't say anything Comes about back attachments. with attachments, right? Comes yeah. back with attachments. Your commander. He's seeking missile right down the middle. Yeah. Oh, did you did you kill Victorian silenced men? No, you didn't. Congratulations. Now they're in your rear. <laughs> Balon said, I brought them back from the dead. Yes. Good job, Balon. <sighs> so that was one of our wish lists. Um, Balon so was it was it was it targeted? Yes. Was it satisfying? No. Sad cry face. Um, so many different ways they could have went with it. I mean, honestly, if they could have taken him out of the bubble that I put him in 
and made it so that he had to deploy in the own deployment zone. Yeah, that would have been more satisfying. At even least... you know, even if they kept the we we want the respawn mechanic to go right, which would be like yes. admittedly an overhaul to the NCU. But if they were going to keep that, at least put it in the friendly deployment zone. <laughs> Put it somewhere and they where couldn't it, even do that. Put it somewhere at least where it takes some form of resource to move that unit into a position to do something. Mm-hmm. Don't give it to them for a point. For a point. It's not a six-point NCU. It's not corn. It's a five-point. Five-point NCU. Hey, Stefan. Yeah. If you kill a Baratheon unit, and they have Solis and Shireen for five points. That unit doesn't die. It stays alive with D3 wounds for me. Yeah, usually one for me. <laughs> if it's Thalon, all 12 and in your rear. Yeah. And it's only one dude. It's not a, it's not a chick and her, and her daughter. It's <laughs> one dude. I know he's, he's king of the salt rock and everything, but Jesus Christ. Maybe he does walk on water. I don't know. God damn. <laughs> right now that's he's the, walking on water. That's the brother Aaron, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, right now it's this dude. He's walking <laughs> on water. Because if you're a Greyjoy player and you're not taking him, you're loco. Because he's, 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 you don't leave home without him. You just don't. He was too strong. He's still too strong. Yeah. The pillage. Um, okay. The it's, pillage it's, a shame, it's, a shame, it's a shame they didn't do more. It's a shame. Yeah. The pillage token, yes. Thank you. Now I don't have super sundering in my flank at a minus four or three or right. whatever the hell it was. Like, ooh, thank you. That was super cool of you. Everything else sucks. Sorry. If you're listening, devs. Help us there. All right, so... Oh, Balon, yay. Still got to deal with him. There's ways to shut him off, though. You got ways. You're a Baratheon player. You can shut him off, can't you? Uh, with uh, Olena? Yeah. There you go. She can, yes. Guess who you're taking against every Greyjoy army? Riders of Highgarden and Olena. <laughs> Two units of it. <laughs> Two units of it. <laughs> Two units of Riders of Highgarden. Best 12 points you'll ever fucking spend. <laughs> Like, dude, and Greyjoys, Greyjoys ain't got no, ain't got no cav. They're hating it. You can kill them. They're, they're calves as they come back from the dead. I'll, I'll give them that. They ain't got no cav. They just come back to life like fucking yeah. zombies. They're the White Walkers that we have. We don't need no White Walkers. All right, Greyjoy White attachment. Walkers that they won't put in the game. They're already in the game. They're just green. Hey, I'm looking at you, George. Finish the fucking book. Get it done. Nice. Come on. All right. Greyjoy attachments. Asha, guess what you got? Boisterous charisma change. Anything else? Nope. That's it. Yeah. Right. Good job. New. Cool. Guess what he got? Motivated by coin change. Woo! <laughs> good job. Hey, they did touch a lot of attachments with one word changes. Yeah. Boom. boom. Attachment patch. Hey, I'm going over a lot of attachments here. <laughs> Motivated by coin is a big deal. Don't you tell me it isn't. Damn rules lawyers. A, I, I know who you are. Anyway. I digress. Alright, so Greyjoy Tactics cards. Because they're attachments. That was it. Greyjoy Attachments cards. Dagmar. They didn't like your cards. They used to count as two tokens that you had attached when you played this card. So it was start of any turn. You got to play the card, and you counted as having two pillage tokens till the end of turn. Boom. Or end of round or something like that. We'll put it up side by side. You'll tell me I'm wrong later. Um, now, target one friendly Greyjoy unit. They gain one pillage token. Then attach this card to that unit until the end of the round. While attached, the unit's melee attacks gain plus one to hit. Also while attached, this unit suffers minus one one to its defense dice rolls. 
that's sus. So Dagmar got a little bit of a tune down. Because he was he was too hard. Was he even like the one you'd see in tournaments? It was always Victorian, wasn't it? Coordination tactics. Sometimes you would see people pull out because it's a it's annoying because you could pull some weird shit with it, especially mm-hmm. if you had a weird rules lawyer dude. You could pull some. Oh, you could do it. Ever. No. Yeah. So I like that they removed that. Um, which we'll talk about next card, but the negative on it, that sucks. Yeah. I mean, great guys don't have good armor. Yeah. Except unless you're iron makers. I think this is where you just, uh, you're throwing all in offense on a unit and you're swinging for the fences. And if you come up short, you got Balaam in the back pocket, right? With that one pillage token. And plus one to hit. All right, maybe. Eh. All right, I give that a meh. Yeah, it's a meh. All right, Iron Envy. Uh, that repl- this whole card, brand new, replaces Coordination Tactics. Coordination Tactics, I think, was a problem for Greyjoys, right? Rules, shit, right? Is that the one that allowed them to steal abilities? Endless Horde. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yep. No, no, no. That's that's a um, mind, not mind games. Is it mind games? It's oh, it's one yeah. It's a it's a Euron card, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the one Chris always plays against me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, so Iron Envy replaces coordination tactics um, when a friendly Greyjoy unit activates. This unit suffers one wound and becomes vulnerable. Choose one for each of the friendly units in short range. With pillow token, choose plus one. Okay. Uh, this attack gets sundering. Cool. This attack gains vicious. Okay. Um, remove one pillage token from one other friendly Greyjoy infantry unit in short range. Place it on another. Place the remove pillage token on this unit. All right. So it's moving pillage tokens around. All right, so, eh, okay. Um, Greyjoys have Sundering, right? A lot of times, most of their units. Greyjoys have Vicious a lot of times, right? Mm-hmm. That one unit has Vicious and Sundering, right? <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure. Just I just want to double move, check. Move the pillage token, All the right, card. So, you're not playing this on silence, man. Um, I guess you, uh, I don't know. It's a meh. Not really good. You lost coordination tactics where you could cheese the shit out of stuff and make. It's a, it's a downgrade for Dagmar. Yeah. Dagmar got kicked. Nerf bat was a real bat. Sorry, Dagmar. Uh, you were too good. Someone had a, someone had it out for you. Don't worry though, because up next we have <laughs> everything. Champions of the Stag aren't allowed to be <laughs> in infantry form. Um, all right, so Iron Makers are next. Uh, they they got touched. Um, they got touched a lot. I like it. I like the touch. I, I like the idea. So they changed their attack profile. 755. Only unit in the game, right? Mm hmm. Only unit in the game. 755. Still got the critical blow. Ones give you a weekend. Um, pillage tokens still give you. Plus one attack die and plus one morale. And plus one to your defense dice. Oh yeah, that's right. So, gives them so a you're getting a two, of... you're a two five, throwing eight dice, six dice, six dice. Movement five. Movement five. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. They, hey, they need something. They need something to go with their Balon NCU. 
if you do end up killing these motherfuckers, <laughs> they're just gonna go on in your okay. side. To be, to be completely fair, they needed something so that it wasn't just auto pick <laughs> silenced men, right? <laughs> so now you can have silenced men or oh. you can have iron makers, and they're both good choices. It, it's they are. It's a good unit. Uh, I love it. I hate to go against it. If I'm playing Greyjoy's, I'm picking it. I know defense. There's a place for them. Yep. Yeah, they're they're definitely a linchpin. They're the they're the anvil, definitely in the. You would you, you would have hands. thought, you would have thought if they were gonna buff Iron Makers that they would have buffed Champions of the Stag. You know, two two birds of the flo- of the same flock. Kind of. But no, kind of no. Rip speed five. The stag. Um, yeah, another I, speed, I, another speed five unit with three up armor that can become two up armor. Rose Knights, you stay speed four. <sighs> Queensman, you stay speed four. I great uh, Greyjoys who are notoriously unarmored. They know how to wear armor. You Baratheons just don't know how to walk good. No, they they stole this armor. They stole this armor. They know they know how to attack people with armor. <laughs> Just throw the armor at him. <laughs> so playing uh, too much Baldur's Gate three. <laughs> <laughs> throw the shoe. Where's Where's Craig when we need him? Uh, so, um, one of our lists, one of our wish list items was Greyjoy, Balon, Greyjoy tone the Balon down. If you tone Balon down, it probably wouldn't be that bad. Probably wouldn't be that bad. I'd have some. You know, if Balon got envy, kicked, but... I wouldn't care about Iron Makers. Right. I. Yeah. I mean, I'd be envious as a Baratheon player looking at champs, but the, the, the big the big item was Balon. He did get touched. It just wasn't sufficient. Yep. Big ass foam bat. All right. The other Almost big done. winner is. Yep. Of other this big patch. winner of this patch. Like Mr. Kurt said. Um, didn't get very many changes. We will say that. Just their changes were substantial. Martells are my third favorite faction. You're probably second most hated. They... They're, they're a unique puzzle to try to solve. Yes. Um, as someone once said, Baratheons punish you for performing an attack against them. Martells punish you for being on the table across from them. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, it didn't get any easier with this patch. Um, they did. Again, the free VPs boop, out the window. Free VPs Except scrum. for... And I kind, of, I kind of feel sad about that. Um... I thought that was really? unique. Yeah, I, and maybe I'm in a minority voice here. Um, I thought that was unique for Martells, and I thought that was kind of neat to have alternative paths to victory, especially in a North America scene that's very, oh, I have to table my opponent, and then you have like a European scene where it's like, I have to play the mission and avoid combat. And it was like, well, how about you score victory points through your NCUs, the Martells have this third secret way, and I had kind of, I kind of liked that, and I kind of wanted to see that built upon and fleshed out more, and see like, you know, maybe Greyjoys could do something with pillage and score victory points through pillage. Um, I thought there was That's room nice there. Point. I thought there was room there for development to to be creative. Um, you know, balancing it out to make it fair is always you know its own Hard. issue, but I thought there was. There was room there to do something, and it looks like they've completely given up on that. <laughs> yeah, they they did. No more free shit. Pay for everything. Earn it. Earn your keep. So, uh, Mr. Doran Martell got a little bit of a change, like his entire card. Um, so, now, um, it's not even... You don't even activate another unit. Oh, no, you still do. That's from Watergarden. Sorry, my bad. Um, 
Each time Dorn claims a zone, before resolving the zone's effect, place an order token on him. Sweet. Every time he claims a zone, gets an order token. Good job. Um, if Doran claims water gardens, guess what? Get an extra one. You get two. And four tokens gets you one bullet point. Mm-hmm. Well, each time Doran claims water gardens, he may replace that zone's effect with oh, remove yeah. four order tokens from a friend. That's even worse. <laughs> oh, did you see that? Do you see what they wrote there? Did you even catch that little slight with one word? Yeah. Remove up to four order tokens from a... Oh, up to four. Okay. Up to four. Nope, you missed it still. From a friendly Doran. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Anybody yeah, yeah. that was at Adepticon But there's two, two Dorans. Ago, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two doors. Uh, I think oh, all in all, good, the good change. An there's, a, there's a lot less keeping track of the tactics board and the round that you're in. And it's like, mm-hmm. uh, which two zones do I need to worry about this round? Is this the round where I use little finger to counter Dorn, or is this the round I don't fucking bother? Yep. Could good change there. Um, now there is one thing to say about this: you cannot stack. That it doesn't oh. say you can't stack, but when I talked to some people in the know, they were saying that if it requires an FAQ that people are trying to stack it, it's not supposed to be stacked. You're not supposed to be able to remove four order tokens, heal eight wounds. Right. Okay. So there's you know there's some there's some run the mill stuff here. Yep. Heal two so wounds, place easy. a token, remove a token, draw a card. The one that catches my eye as in something that's new is pivot and shift. We've had move mm. and pivot with marching. We've mm-hmm. had pivot, move, pivot with maneuvering. And we've had don't pivot at all and move with shifting. This is the first pivot move. Mm-hmm. So well, that's new. Uh, Night's Watch had it. Did they? Yeah. Of course and they so, did. Yeah, Night's Watch had Watch. it. And so did Targ's. Targ had it if you had horses. If you uh, put, had horses, it was treated as a three-inch maneuver. You were allowed to pivot first. Well, I thought it was neat. Okay. It, is, it is still neat. It is really good for Martells that don't have a lot of movement or can use well, they that do, movement. But it's, I was going to say, yeah. they can use that movement more efficiently than other mm-hmm. ar- other factions can. Yeah. Uh, so they get, like you said, the the place any one condition. It's like a little bit of everything off the board. Okay, mm-hmm. um, if someone doesn't claim water gardens on you, you could you could pile up a bunch of them tokens quick, and then you could roll with them. Um, no pun intended there. Did you even catch it? Roll with them. <laughs> All right, Night sorry. Mania. It's late. <laughs> Nymeria. Um, Nymeria was never taken. I never took her because the third bullet point of her used to be if you controlled water gardens, gain plus one to your movement. Guess what? You weren't taking Nymeria and Doran 90% of the time because they canceled each other out. Yeah. If someone took water gardens, you got nothing on her card. Who, who's going to risk taking water, putting water gardens out there if they're just going to lose a four-point NCU influence? The hell with that. She'd sit there. Uh, so, so nice boost to her. Yeah, so she got changed from instead of controlling water gardens, now it's controlling horses. And it's if you or your opponent control them. Ah, yes. So and well, that, that was, was how same, it was in the past, too, right? Yeah, it was how it was in the past. Yeah. Which t- is all the time. <clears throat> Unless you're leading off an attack with them. Even then, you get critical blow with them. She's awesome. Um, I'm going to try and fit her in a way. i got to figure out a way. Elias Sand. Yep, Elias Sand. Voices Christmas Charisma. Charisma. Precision. Yep, Precision. Same thing as before. Uh, Boisterous Charisma gets you that token. Uh, superior Positioning. Change Same thing, the but 
uh, commander's unit. So it's not specifically just Rob. Yes. It can be any. Martel yeah. Commander. Yeah. So like Rob's was Rob. This is any commander unit. Nice. Love it. Badass. Uh, the Starfall Knights. Starfall Knights. Yeah. Lance then change. Lance change nerf. Eight point five four. The Strangler. Okay. My favorite. My favorite change. So again, an underused NCU. Miss uh, Tyreen, what's her name? Is that her name? Uh, Tane. Tyene. I always call her Tane. All right. So whatever her name is, she's got some poison that she puts out on the zones. So before the poison was, if you took the poison in two turns, you died. Mm-hmm. Okay. She was five points. Eh. Two turns, you could play around that like you wouldn't believe. You could wait till the end, of, towards the end of the game when it didn't matter. Who cares? You killed right. that NCU. <laughs> Who cares? So the new Strangler goes right in line with Rising Temps. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Rising Temps for NCUs. So now the Strangler is this unit suffers the following based on the game round. The unit being the NCU. Uh, on game round two, loses all abilities. And they're all communi- cumulative. Cumulative. Uh, there, thank you. I, I keep you around for something. Uh, <laughs> three plus, three, around three, uh, you don't count as controlling the tactic zones for abilities or effects. That's pretty freaking big. Uh, four, you may only activate this unit if you have no other units you can activate this round. Which, uh, round this five, round four. Yeah, finish it, finish that. That's round four. Round five, you destroy it at the start of the round. So, I like the design. Mm-hmm. I like the change. I think the round four thing kind of falls flat. Yes. I was just uh, going to say. Because it's already been blanked in mm-hmm. round two. And it's, it does even less in round three. Are you really in a rush to use this blank NCU in round four? No, it's the one you pass with. <laughs> right. You're not so trying to... So it's like, that doesn't really... That doesn't really add much there. It's like, ah, you can't use this one until the end. It's like, cool, I didn't want to anyway. What is her trigger for putting it out? I forget. Is it round two? I think so. Um, Hold on, let me pull it up real quick. Round two, start of the round. Is it round two, start of the round? I think so. Uh... Ooh, wait, hold on. Each time... You may target one friendly combat unit. They restore one wound. Uh, every time she cleans the zone. At the start of round two, choose one tactic zone. Yep. Uh, next time they get the Strangler. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they can I still choose. I forgot about the one wound. I can still choose. Ah, I'm going to use Varus to take that zone. Mm-hmm. Expend all of his tokens. Make him a blank NCU anyway. Yep. And then... Cool. It does. It does give you tempo control. I will say that. Because round two, you're usually trying to grab swords, or you're usually trying to get into position, or grab a card that you really want. Um, you're, you're trying to set something up uh, to to block a zone out from someone. Mm-hmm. That's a pain in the ass. Uh, killing it in round five, does it really matter in round five? Honestly, maybe if it's a close game, maybe. Yeah. Um, overall, it's better than it was. It's better it, than it was. It, it might uh, see some play. I still think I they could have done more with it. Yeah, I I, I think so too. Um, Just make the death beat round four. Really. Yeah. I think you don't think that would have been too strong? No. Hmm. Round four is rough. 
Most games, especially tournament games, don't go to round six. They're lucky yeah, to go to true. round five. That was always the the knock on her. Like you're not gonna want to play. Well, it's always the knock on Doran. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to play them in tournaments because you're never gonna use their full mm-hmm. potential. Overall, probably the second winniest out of everybody, right? Maybe third. I think, yeah. You take in you take into consideration where they were before. Yeah. Plus the changes. Yeah. They were already a top tier faction. They remain a top tier faction. They got some buffs. Yeah. Yep. I don't think they. I don't think they're going anywhere. You're gonna have to deal with rising temps, both on the tactics board and on the battlefield. Sorry. At least for now. Um, last one. Marathon. We're almost at the end. Yes, Boltons. Ramsey the Bolton. Sad, the sad Boltons. He gains prey on fear because just terrific visage was not enough. Who would have thought? <laughs> well, let's see. I want to put my commander in Blackguard because they're the only survivable infantry we have. But wait, they already have horrific visage. So, <laughs> oh shit, Ramsey sucks. So we can put him in. Well, now you have know. options because you, now you at least have prey on fear. So now he can stay alive a bit better. <laughs> now, when you put him in cuts, cuts don't automatically die. They have a fighting chance now. <laughs> Speaking of fighting chance, Mr. Steelshanks. Uh, <laughs> he gained Sundering. He gained Sundering. That's gained good. Sundering? Yeah, sundering is a good keyword. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. You can put him in You put him in cuts. Give him Sundering and Vicious. I hate that shared fear. That shared fear is so bad. Hmm. <laughs> Each time, I mean, especially, I guess especially it, when he has iron resolve. Yeah, like he so it's has, like he's less likely to fail. I mean, in a perfect world, you roll a one so you don't take any wounds. Yeah, and you make everybody panicked. Yeah, but it's still a weird mechanic. It's yeah, it's still counter synergistic. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so harsh punishments onto their tactics. Uh, harsh punishments. Um, not added. Let's see. Uh, it they lost the panic token. Lost the panic Every, token. Everything yeah. else is the same. It still suffers extra wounds, it fails panic, and it gains sundry. Yep. Just so panic token. It's a buff. A little bit. It's a small buff. Okay. Bolton suck. They need it bigger than that. Uh, fear, fear keeps, keeps them in alive. Yep. Plus one. Same thing as the neutral one. Yep. Just added the plus one to the commander. So buffs. Oh, wait, we got unit changes. Okay. Yep, unit changes. Just um, little. Tiny. No longer friendly fire auto one wound from Dreadford Archers. Mm-hmm. Everything else is the same, I think. Yep. And then Dreadfort Spearman. Um, Impaling spear. Now, instead of losing that panic, if you already were panicked because you're a Bolton player, you're putting out panics. Uh, now, instead of being become panicked with Impaling Spear, you become weakened. If you already have it. Okay, that's fine. It gives you a, gives you a, a little bit <laughs> extra if you've... Alright, sorry, I, I put my Roost token out on you. I didn't really think you were really going to fail that. And I left that panic token out there. So... Well... Mm. They were a wishless item to get buffed because they were by far the worst faction. It's a mini they got faction. Buffs. They're not a real faction. They're a mini faction. They took place of the neutrals. They got buffs. Uh, I feel yeah, like these buffs are insu- insufficient. I, I don't really even think they got Ramsey's, buffs. Ramsey's attachment went from dog shit to at least he has prey on fear now. Um, Maybe more solid dog shit. <laughs> no steel shanks gained sundering. That's it wasn't you know, a wet something. fart. It was solid dog shit. I would like. I feel you know. <laughs> we were just sharing that freaking meme earlier today. No half measures. <laughs> the change on harsh punishments feels like a half measure. Yeah. It's like haha, you can have sundering on a unit of your choice, but it comes with two downsides. Well, now it only comes with one downside. But it still comes with a downside. Why not just get rid of all the downsides? It's a Is card. giving a unit sundering that big of a deal? Like, Why are you punishing me for p- playing this card? Right. 
Cards are supposed to help you. They're supposed to be a good thing. They're supposed to be a power play. They're supposed to do something That's supposed positive. To give your opponent another victory point. The, the fear keeps a man alive is so negligible. Yep. That extra wound. Yeah, one wound. Okay. The enemy still has to fail the panic mm. test. Do the Boltons... Bones are still lacking in tools to make people fail panic tests. Yep. Lannisters do it more consistently. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, I, I think Lannisters are the better Boltons. Mm hmm. Um, I like the change on the archers. I already liked the archers. I think having, you know, scout openings on a long range archer unit is a good ability. Yep. Um, so that's a nice change. The spearmen, um, that's a fart in the wind. Yeah, that's that's a nothing. I mean, it, it's an extra token. It's it, it's, it's a conditional. It's a, extra it's, token. A, it's a it's a it's a different token. It's not it's not additional. Well, you're it is if you already had panicked. At least you're not losing getting a token. Why 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 are they around seven? <laughs> Because because Bolton. Why why do the uh, why do the factions that deal in panic always have terrible morale themselves? Why is that? Because why Rams, why is that Ramsey the tortured all of his friends. Okay, too. but it's like the same thing with the Lannisters. Like, why do all these Lannisters who deal panic shenanigans have really shitty panic stats themselves? Why is that how we set this up? I don't. Yeah. Someone would have to walk me through that someday. And the I criminals, the criminals are all five plus. Yep, the criminals on the wall who have nothing to fight for. <laughs> They'll stand their ground to the last man. We, we took a vow. We took a vow. Can't <laughs> can't come down off that fucking wall, no matter what. So, so, so did Jamie Lannister. <laughs> no matter no matter how many redheaded wildlings they send our way, we'll resist their redheads. <laughs> So, this so, patch, yeah. this patch, we, I know a lot of people, so this is our PSA, okay. So, I know a lot of people have cried about this patch. Guilty. Yes. And I feel, I feel like it was, if it wasn't for the Targs getting what they got, I think I would have felt a lot differently. Because Targ's got such a buff um, to things they needed that it feels like it, it feels like it, it needed to be done and it was long overdue for them. Everybody else didn't get shit. Like you didn't get shit. You got you all right. You got the best. You didn't, you, you didn't get shit, or you got shit on. Yes, exactly. Uh, if you weren't a Targ, you basically either didn't get shit or didn't get shit on. Martells were the the one outlier because they lost their they lost their free points, but gained Nymeria and the new Rising Temps NCU. Mm -hmm. Like those are good gains, and their lands cave took a hit. Their eight and they were in a good spot to begin with. Yeah, and they were in a good spot to begin with because Rising Temps is a is a kick in the it's a kick like it's a kick yeah. in the butt like it's hard to get rid of it is a kick in the butt and I played Martells I and I don't like it I mean I like it but I don't like it um so overall again the patch rainbows and unicorns or doom and gloom or neither just right down the middle at least it's balanced. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. If tactical approach didn't get changed the way it did, if it was still your flat two or didn't have to expend the token for the wound, what mm -hmm. would you think? I would still not like the patch. Um, really? Okay. Yeah. And 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 the, all right. This is just me. Different people. Like mm -hmm. you are a target player, so mm -hmm. there was more in the patch that you liked. For me, like I said, I wanted to see an Andy change. I wanted to see a Davos change. I wanted to see King at the Wall change. I wanted to see Champions of the Stag change. Davos changed nicely. 
the rest really didn't happen for me. Um, I wanted to see Balon change in a meaningful way. That didn't really happen for me. Uh, I wanted to see the healing engine on Tully Cavaliers broken. That didn't happen. Um, so the big the big wish list items for me either didn't get addressed or didn't get addressed Enough. to an extent that was satisfactory for me. Yeah. And then you add the kick in the balls that was tactical approach on top of it. So. And no cots. And no cots. Every everybody else. No, no, five no, speed. no. King at the wall change. He's still dead last in Wrath and Commanders. The the worst for me. No, yeah, no, no speed five for no, our. Three no, of speed, our no speed five. <laughs> yeah. um, like that. that, that is and that's such not. A and that's not to thing. say. And like that's not to say there weren't any good things mm. in this patch. Like I do recognize, you know, there were some good things for Targaryens in there. There were some good mm. things for Martells in there. Um, uh. But yeah, just not. It wasn't. It wasn't what I was hoping for. It included some stuff I didn't want it to include, and it just it missed too many items, too many misses. What if I was to say this was only? What if they? So we complained so many, for so many years that they only put out one patch every like what, eight or nine months, every ten months, mm -hmm. or a year would go by, year and a half would go by, nothing. I feel like this is half of something they didn't finish. Maybe. Like, All right, you know, oh I'm, shit, I'm gonna... we, came to, we came to our six-month deadline. I'll, oh I'll... shit, let's yeah. just throw what we had. I'll even say, I don't even want like a huge sweeping changes, especially right before U.S. Nationals. Like, yeah. that was really annoying the last couple of years. It's like, okay, I've got my list, I've got what I feel comfortable with. I've, I've practiced it. I've played with it at some major events. I'm ready to go. And then big sweeping change right before U.S. Nats. One Everything month. gets turned on its head. One month before U.S. Nats. You have no time to prepare. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite fine with minimal changes. Um, Just targeted. It needed to be much more be targeted. targeted. It needed to hit the right things, and it needed to hit the right things in the right way. And I don't think it did. It's, it was supposed to hit attachments. It didn't really hit attachments. I again. I, I hope. I hope that this is only half of it. And I almost. I almost hope that it is, and that it really? that this is it. I almost like. Like I said, I really liked season four. I did. Too. I almost. I almost. I know, and I and I know I'm in the minority in this. I almost wish there was no patch, that they just left it as it was at season four. It became yes, so Bolton's stagnant. I know, but it's going to end someday. And I'd rather have them end it while it's relatively good before mm. they screw something up. True. Like That's Tack a approach. good point. Who knows what the next patch has. Like Tack approach. Every, everyone, everyone looks at patches like, oh, what, what goodies could there be in there for me? There could be a poisoned apple in there for you. This mm -hmm. time I got it. Next time you might get it. You know what that tells me? You need to go buy another army. I already have them all. Well, then why the hell aren't you playing something else? I do. I've been playing Starks lately. And before that, I was playing Boltons. Tully Cav, asshole. I really wasn't even using, using Tully Cav. I was using Stark Outriders to practice for Crownland Scouts. What about Winterfell Guard? I liked them a lot. I used them to, you know, kind of as the placeholder for Kingsmen. And I liked Not them. Not too powerful? They're, no, I think they're right up there with Kingsmen. Yeah. Really? Oh, I hate the adaptive part of them. I love it, because you can do oh. different things with them. You can go, today I want the Winterfell Champion. Today I want the Stark oh, Sworn Sword Captain. Today I want Bran and Hodor. Like, it's up to you, you know? It's not fair. <laughs> Why does everybody you get want, adaptive? You want adaptive on Unsullied? Or <laughs> yes! I want, I, want an, I want an Unsullied uh, uh, officer for one point. I'll say I'll say this about the Winterfell Guard. The downside to having adaptive is like, well, now you don't want to put your commander in there because now you're not taking advantage yeah, true. of that adaptive. That's Unless they're like Davos, where they can disregard attachment limits. They don't have one of them, thank God. Yeah. Ugh. So that was our patch. Overall, you got our feel from it. Hopefully, 
you see something that you can take from it and you can run with it to your community that you can build from it um I, again we we both are firm believers in this last season was probably one of the most balanced and i feel like fun seasons that i've had um you still can have fun with your lists still be flavorful uh, still go out for a game night and, and put things on the table that you haven't tried before. Don't be that dude that runs out there every week and runs Drogo up someone's ass every week. That's annoying. I hate that. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> not, for, not for this play, tournament. Play Jorah. <laughs> so, uh, alright, so uh, that was our review. Um, again, for this show, we're trying to do a, something a little different. We're trying to do uh, some more fun, some more flavor, some more um, list building, some more... We could even do tactics talk uh, if people want to get in-depth in game modes. Ugh, I, I don't really want to, but if you really want to, I will. Game modes are kind of boring for me. I know I like for to- next episode, I really want to do a big long talk on deployment i have a whole mm. i have a whole segment set up for that Ooh. um but yeah, for future episodes we want we want people to come on here with us yep um hit up stefan stovetop mm-hmm. on discord or myself mm-hmm. belisarius on discord if you want to come on and just talk yep. um we want yep. we want to have guests we want to we want to talk we want to we want to talk do more than just community. talk about updates we want to do yep. we want to do different things so Talk about your community, how many people you have, what you guys have been doing, what works for your community. What if you're like your starter box tournament that I stole from you? What if that's something that helps jumpstart someone else's community um, that you learn from from someone that you probably wouldn't have learned from? Um, I, I think that those are good things that we can do to help bridge some of these gaps, especially in the U.S., where communities are so far apart. Um, so if, if you guys can leave comments, um, again, we're going to try and do segments. Uh, we're going to try and come up with some ideas for list building, yada, yada, yada. Um, and, uh, if you guys haven't checked out, we, we do also have the Sunday slaughter Patreon page, uh, that helps us out with equipment and getting to events. Um, we do also, if you're new to Sunday slaughter, new to any of us, um, me and Kurt, uh, we do streams across the country for uh, A Song of Ice and Fire, uh, tournament, live tournaments. Uh, we do recorded ones too. Um, I love going out. We've gone to LVO a couple of years, Adepticon, Atlantic City Open, um, Nats last year, Nats this year we're going. We'll be at Nats this year, yeah. Yep. Uh, we'll so both be there. It should be... I, I just want it to be more um, us reaching out to you and, and, and getting everybody together and helping with Patreon helps all that out. Um, so thank you guys again for watching. Uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can, hopefully next week. And for now, bye. See ya. Peace.